रामजी सर हजर अभी रूपक जी भी मैं विष्णुजी लाई देखे अष्णु पांडेजी है ही इज अनलाइन लुक्स लाइक नमस्कार विष्णु जी वहाँ को स्लाइड एजेंडा में दस बजे सकने यहाँ को दस बजे अब को डेढ़ घंटा में स्पीकर ढिला जोइन हिजो एक दुजना खाली कर बस बोला ठीक है इसे कर रहा हूँ सर मैं एक लीव कर इन बिट्विन जोइन कर अभी पांडे सर बरू हम स्लाइड को अब तो हमें नदेखे हजूले संख्या उन्ना सर स्लाइड अल टाइट मिला हजूल पक्क नहीं है तब सेयर कर दून पर्ला जो विष्णु सर ए होती समय एलोकेटेड टाइम टोटल ट्वेल्व मिनट हो दस मिनट में रैपअप कर दुई मिनट कर एक घंटा रामजी राउत साहब ले प्रब्लम थी मदन को प्रेजेंटेशन मैं आज बिहान पठा पाने भो रामजी राउत साहब बिहान को हिजो है मैं पठान भाई है हिजो पठा को भाग कुरो अर्क प्रदीप भाई लगे आई वर इफ आई निड टू प्ले दैट वन मैं पठाउन सक स्टिल मैं तो पाए छे सर मैं अरुक पाए हमें अपलोड कर सकें दीप भाई लगे कम्युनिकेशन करें मदन को आगे बेला में मैं सेयर कर जो लगे सर इस खोले पैल ठीक कर ठैक्क मो कर अथवा लेटमी ट्राई वन मोर टाइम यो के मदन को रिकॉर्डिंग करें आगे तो प्ले कर मित्र दुख पाए वहाँ बाड़ी पहरो गए कहकर्डिंग रेकर्डिंग करा रेकर्डिंग इट लुक्ड गुड मैं दोबारा रेकर्डिंग करा आई थिंक इट्स पर्फेक्ट आठ मिनट कति को पीपुल वोट नो द डिफरेंस इट्स गुड म फेरी ट्राई कर फरवर्ड कर यदि आएन देखि आई थिंक क्यों उसे मेसेंजर में पठा क्या अस मैं अलग सजी भैन तईपन अई थिंक आई एम ट्राइंग टू सेंड इफ नट विल मेक इट वर्क वी हेव द प्रेजेंटेशन मेसेंजर डाउनलोड ट्राई 
एकचोटि यो हिजो चाहिँ माइक टेस्ट गर्नलाई पनि यसो नाम कल आउट गरेको थियौ है हामीले स्पिकर भाइ बहिनीहरुलाई डेफिनेटली त्यो गरेर 5 मिनेट्स दिया थियौ हिजो आज पनि लेट्स बी फेयर अम हेलो रूपक कर्ण भाइ क्यान यू क्यान यू से हेलो क्यान यू स्पीक अप हेलो हेलो सर यस या वी आर जस्ट टेस्टिंग वेदर स्पीकर्स आर इन एन्ड वेदर देयर इज अ सिस्टम वर्क्स ओके थैंक यू you will be the okay, first sir. one to talk today sure sir uh, arati joshi ji hello are you in i do not see her in the list arati joshi varsha sharma are you in varsha can you speak up varsha yes sir i am here oh okay varsha are you in hello yeah, yeah. yes yeah. sir Okay good uh, thank you we are just checking whether people are in okay and the mic system as well susmita sigdal ji hello susmita sigdal maybe she is not in hello susmita ji all right next madan subedi ji barkhar make sir le bhannu bhayo madan chai waha ko recorded cha sabina padel are you in yes sir i am in All right good good morning a uh, good evening there sabina ji okay srishti upadhyay thank you sir srishti upadhyay yes, sir i'm here hello right. sir i'm here good 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 so okay. most of you are here that's very good news uh bishnu pande sir will join us in about 1 hour okay barsha is not at in ओके बट फर्स्ट टू स्पीकर्स ओके आरती जी आरती जी भी भो लगे मैं हो आरती जोशी ओके वी हेव द वेरी फर्स्ट स्पीकर एंड देन थर्ड स्पीकर एंड एंड डाउन सो विल विल गिव अबाउट फाइव मिनट्स एज डॉक्टर मेगा सर मेन्सन अर्लियर एंड देन विल टॉक अबाउट फ्यू लॉजिस्टिक्स and then we'll begin uh, hopefully uh, all of you especially the speakers were present yesterday as well and they listened to they observed uh, how the proceeding went on i believe that will be very helpful Um, greetings. Yeah, hello. Dr. Lamsal, could you put uh, modern stock uh, next to last? Uh, if you can switch around. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's in the list for first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Maybe five. Seven. 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 Oh, great. Uh, so then we'll have Madan's presentation, the uh, recorded video towards the end, okay? After Sristi. So Ramji Dawood sir, so it came out okay, you think then? Yeah, I tried it to work, but I have uploaded uh, in the share folder. Now it is, uh, I mean, Dave should be able to access it. Super. So make make sir, do you still want the Madan's towards the end? I or? think we are okay. I think we are okay. so we'll play we'll do his uh, on his slot yeah. then right yeah on his slot okay all right all right uh, good morning um, 
Good evening there in back in Nepal or whatever time, uh, wherever you have joined from. Uh, this is uh, Buddhi Lamsal, uh, Associate Professor of Food Processing in Iowa State University. University. Uh, hopefully you, you are able to hear me. Uh, I'm hearing myself some noise, I do not know why. Um, but uh, I'll be moderating the, the conference this today's uh, uh, research mini grant conference uh, presentation. I'll be moderating that. Uh, um, but before I do, uh, I again would like to welcome uh, the participants. Um, and and I again like to congratulate all the student uh, speakers. Uh, hopefully it has been very good learning experience for you. Um, and hopefully you will keep your engagement uh, with NAPA uh, for a very, very long period of time. Okay, so with that, let me invite uh, Professor Mega Parajuli, uh, who is the current chair of this NAPA Association. So I'd like to invite him for a few words before we begin our session today. Professor thank you, Parajuli, Dr. Longsal, for a few minutes here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, namaskar, good morning, good evening. Uh, all the greetings, good, very early morning in Hawaii and so forth. Uh, uh, again, uh, this is the second half of our uh, NAPA sponsored uh, mini grant, uh, research mini grant uh, convention or conference. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, uh, experience, wonderful presentations uh, yesterday, and uh, hopefully we will replicate or even exceed. Uh, yesterday's performance today. We are very excited. And uh, I will come back to at the end to say a few words if I get time. So I will not take much time now except just to uh, uh, invite everyone, all the speakers today and hopefully uh, speakers from yesterday to support today's speakers, researchers, and um, Welcome to the second half of this conference uh, uh, goes to uh, all the advisors, uh, both in Nepal as well as in North America and all the sponsors, uh, all the <coughs> NAPA executive committee members and all NAPA members uh, in, in supporting this. With that, I will stop and let the proceedings begin. Uh, and uh, I'll come back to greet you toward the end of the proceeding today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Parajali, sir. Um, so before we begin, uh, I will just have to update you or bring up to you guys uh, the logistics, especially the speakers. Um, so you may realize the total time for presentation or, or your slot actually is 12 minutes, but we definitely would like you guys to uh, wrap it up uh, by 10 minutes. Um, so I'll be running a, a timer, if you can see me, and then hopefully it will make some noise that you can hear at the end of 10 minutes. Uh, and you will have two minutes to wrap it up, uh, or even, if, even in fact, wrap it up by 10 minutes and two minutes for question and answer. So that will be very, very helpful because uh, if, if there are some details um, to know, uh, questions and answers, very good question and answers uh, um, would be uh, there. We'll have one plenary uh, uh, discussions towards the end as well. But at the end of 10 minutes, you will hear a buzz and then you'll uh, have to. Uh, wrap it up, okay? If at the end of 12 minutes, if for some reason you are still speaking, then you will not be speaking anymore. We'll be cutting you off, okay? Please do not feel it otherwise. Uh, we'll have to be very strict in time here. So we'll be moving on to next presentation at the end of 12 minutes. So we'll be doing that, uh, all right? Um, so, and question answers. Uh, we have uh, hopefully uh, uh, viewers, uh, participants um, joining us through YouTube as well as this Zoom. So please, please use the comment boxes in these uh, 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 platforms for your questions. And then those uh, uh, comments are moderated, uh, monitored, and then they are collected and passed on to uh, moderator, that to me, and then I'll be asking questions to, um, questions to the speakers, all right? 
So during the preliminary plenary uh, discussions, we may have a few more questions. So with that, let us begin today's uh, session. Okay, today's uh, first presentation is by Rupak Karna, uh, and he is with AFU Agriculture and Forestry University uh, Super Zone Implementation Program. And the program, uh, his title is Agronomic Performance of Maize Hybrid Cultivars Under Different Plant Densities in Spring Season in Nepal. Uh, Rupak, uh, you are good to go. Hello, namaste everyone. I'm Rupak Karn, Master of Sciences in Agriculture from Agriculture and Forestry University 2019. Uh, my research topic is Agronomic Performance of Maize Hybrid Cultivars Under Different Plant Density in Spring Season in Dang, Nepal. Next. My objectives of this studies are here, general objective to, contri uh, to contribute to improve maize productivity for import substitution in Nepal. And my specific objectives are to determine the growth and productivity of maize hybrid at different plant density in spring season in Dang, and to identify the optimum plant density maize hybrid and their interaction on productivity of maize. Next. Uh, the research was con conducted at Sonpur Lamai Dang, which was designed by a split plot design uh, with two main plot factor and sub plot factor. In main plot factor, I took plant spacing, three plant spacing spacings were used, uh, uh, 55,555 plants per hectare, 66,666 plants per hectare, and 83,333 plants per hectare. And sub plot factor was taken maize uh, which were Rajkumar, Pioneer 3533, and Bayashid 9220. These all treatments were replicated thrice. A net plot size was 8 meter square. A number of rows in a plot was 6. Next. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, my land preparation, seed sowing with Jap planter, counting number of. Next. Next. Uh, these are some observations and data analysis which were taken uh, during my research. Uh, next. Uh, in case of leaf area index, uh, the leaf area index was uh, significantly higher at plant spacing 60 by 20 centimeter square at 30 days after planting, which was 0 0.0944 than other two spacing. In case of hybrid, leaf area index was significantly higher in case of Pioneer 3533 which was 0 0.0646 than other two hybrids. In case of 60 days after planting, leaf area index was significantly higher at plant density 60 by 20 centimeters square, which was 1.915. In case of hybrid, uh, leaf area index at 60 days after planting was not seen significantly different. In case of 90 days after planting, uh, leaf area index was significantly higher at a spacing 60 by 20 centimeters square, which was 4.02. And in case of hybrids, there was no significant difference, but still Pioneer 3533 has higher leaf area index at 90 days after planting, which was 3.92. Next. In case of ill component, uh, first number of years per hectare, uh, the uh, number of years per hectare was significantly higher at a spacing 60 by 20 centimeter square, which was 71,708 number of years per hectare than other two spacing. In case of hybrid, number of years per hectare was significantly in the hybrid pioneer 3533, which was 66,646 uh, number of years per hectare than other two hybrids. In case of number of kernels per year, uh, there was no significant difference in case of spacing uh, as well as in hybrids, but in case of hybrid pioneer 3533, we can observe there is higher number of kernels per year, which was 597.2. In case of 1,000 grain weight, there was no significant difference uh, at this, the different spacing as well as hybrids. In case of grain yield, the main component of the yield components, uh, we can observe uh, there was significantly higher grain yield at a spacing 60 by 20 centimeters square, which was 12,887 kg per hectare than other two spacings. In case of hybrids, uh, we can observe a Pioneer 3533 has significantly higher grain yield then other two hybrids, uh, which was 11,608 kg per hectare. Next. 
In case of average grain yield of test varieties under different plant density, we can observe uh, higher plant density 60 by 20 centimeters square as highest average grain yield, which was 12,887 kg per hectare than other two spacings. Next. Next. Uh, average grain yield of test hybrid varieties, we can observe the hybrid Pioneer 3533 as highest average grain yield uh, then other two hybrids that uh, that is 11,608 kg per hectare. Next. In case of production economics, uh, total production costs uh, was uh, uh, not seen significantly difference in case of both spacing as well as variety. But in case of spacing uh, 60 by 20 centimeters square, we can observe higher costs of production that is 173.553. In case of hybrid, we can observe Pioneer 3533 have seen some higher uh, cost of production than other two hybrids. In case of gross return, we can observe uh, the plant density 60 by 20 centimeters square as highest uh, gross return, uh, significantly higher gross return than other two spacing, uh, that is uh, 386.621. In case of hybrid, we can observe the hybrid Pioneer 3533 has high, uh, significantly highest uh, gross return, that is 348.246 than other two hybrids. In case of net return, we can observe uh, plant density 60 by 20 centimeters square, uh, highest net return, uh, significantly highest net return, which was 213.07 uh, than other two spacing. In case of hybrids, we can observe net return was significantly higher in case of hybrid Pioneer 3533, which was 186.745 than other two hybrids. In case of BC ratio, we can observe uh, plant density 60 by 20 centimeter uh, square as the highest, significantly highest uh, BC ratio, which was 2.227 than other two spacing. In case of hybrid, we can observe the Pioneer 3533 as significantly highest BC ratio and then other two hybrids, which was 2.145. Next. Uh, in case of conclusion, the productivity of hybrid maize was higher at higher plant density, up to 83,333 plants per hectare. Uh, in case of present recommendation of uh, 53,333 plants per hectare is not sufficient for optimum yield of maize hybrid. Among the tested varieties, Pioneer 3533 produced highest yield of 11,608 kg per hectare. Maize yield can be improved substantially with the appropriate choice of crop variety and high plant density. Next. I would like to acknowledge uh, my advisors, local advisor, Professor Sravan Kumar Sa, uh, Agriculture and Forest University, and NAPA advisor, Dr. Nitinan Khanal, PhD, Agriculture and Food, Agri-Food Canada, and funding support from NAPA, uh, NAPA Mini Grant, as well as the collaborating team, participant farmers and student colleagues. Next. And thank you for this opportunity providing me to present everyone this research presentation. All right, thank you very much, uh, Rupakwai. Uh, wonderful presentation. And it is well, well within time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, several minutes, uh, in fact, three to four minutes for question answers uh, to Rupa. Please, uh, uh, please send your questions to comments. Um, the very first question um, I have here for Rupa is, what density did your study recommend? I, I, I mentioned planting density. I, mean, I mentioned earlier in conclusion part that 83,333 plants per hectare was recommended from my study. All right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> there is one suggestion. Uh, uh, adding a standard error bar would have been in your graphs would have been really good. Uh, 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 please keep that in mind while you do a scientific <coughs> presentation. Uh, error bar uh, is really required, uh, in fact. All right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, there is one more question here. Um, were you able to measure the seed moisture content at the harvest? Yes, sir. I measured the soil uh, seed, uh, sorry, seed moisture content at the harvest, but uh, in this presentation slide, I didn't mention about that because of the time, like I have um, three, four more slides, but um, I did not able to conclude it. 
I see. Okay, Dr. Lamsala, one more question. Looks like it came privately to me. It was the first question from Dr. Tiwari. Why not selected Nepali libraries? Okay, um, thank you for a good question, sir. Uh, because uh, uh, I was uh, in super zone area, so uh, farmers are um, help from the PMMP to uh, conduct commercial farming of maize. And that's why um, farmers, uh, their, their choice of, uh, choice of uh, preference was given to Indian hybrids because uh, they also know about the uh, ill gap between the Nepalese hybrids as, and compared to the Indian hybrids and their well availability of Indian hybrids in that place. So either going to the Nepalese hybrid to conduct the research, um, the farmers usually prefer the Indian varieties. So Indian hybrids, that's why I went through the Indian hybrids for this research for the commercial production. All right, uh, that's uh, very good. Uh, <clears throat> maybe one last question um, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, should we go even higher density? Uh, no. Any reason uh, for that? So that's what uh, you got higher, the best? Uh, when, when higher density causes more uh, lodging of the plants. I have uh, planted some plants there, uh, which, was, uh, which was not mentioned here at uh, that place. And lodging was seen higher at that case. At that case, and that's okay. why. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, we'll stop the conversation here. Uh, please, the comments, uh, please send again. We are collecting all of them and uh, uh, sending them to the speakers later separately, and then even putting up in the uh, web page. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. We appreciate uh, a lot um, for your uh, work, Rupak. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, uh, please keep engaged. All right, um, one quick thing for the speakers. Uh, speakers, uh, if your internet supports it, if your bandwidth uh, is okay, uh, please do turn on your video while you present, okay? That way it will look like uh, a, a professional presentation and we can see uh, your presentation while, while you do that, okay? We can see you. So I, I would like to request the presenters if it is possible, please turn your video on, okay? So uh, with that, let me invite uh, Arati Joshi for our second presentation. And uh, Arati Joshi is from AFU Ag Ag and Forestry uh, University. And her presentation topic is uh, characterization and evaluation of Nepalese Colocasia land acres for biodiversity conservation. Actually, she wants to share her slides. She says that she has modified the slide. Can we do that? Can we let her? If, if she is ready with slides right away, yeah. uh, if we lose time, that uh, then we may have to redo. Arati, are you ready to share slide quickly? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay. And please turn on your video if possible. Okay. I'm not able to share the screen. Okay, then we'll share it for you. You, you speak, okay? Uh, Dev, sir, we will have to go back to you sharing. Or give our permission. I think she's not permitted, so. Oh, that I do not know how, how you do. Yeah, let's take a minute and uh, ask her if she can share because she may be prepared. Pre she may be preparing on her own set of slides. So, let's I'm not time. able to share the screen, sir. I think she may not have the privilege of sharing. Uh, you know, um, Dev, sir, hello, or whoever, can you make her a uh, 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 host or a speaker? I don't know how they can share it. Devji, are you around? Hello? You should be able to share now. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm able to share it now. All right. <clears throat> can you see my screen? Uh, we can. Uh, can you make it to the slide presentation mode so it becomes bigger? Yeah, slideshow. Yep, thank you. Click okay. here. No, it, it did not click. Is it visible? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yes. 
Okay, now I'll time you for 10 minutes, okay? Okay, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello and namaste everyone. Uh, I am Aarti Josi and uh, today I'll be presenting on characterization and evaluation of Nepalese colocasia land races for biodiversity conservation. Uh, it is reported that uh, there are about 200 vegetable species available in Nepal and only 50 species are cultivated. A Colocasia esculenta that is commonly called as corcolo or pedalo is one of the underutilized vegetable crop of Nepal. And uh, studies have showed that uh, Colocasia esculenta play a great role in meeting the food and nutritional need of the marginal uh, local tribe of Nepal. Uh, the easy cultivation technique uh, uh, and wide adaptability of the of this vegetable in different climatic regions make it, make uh, a great scope for its commercialization. However, uh, there are no registered variety of colocasia in Nepal, and the study on genetic diversity and improvement are very limited. Uh, so, this uh, research was carried out uh, with an objective. Uh, uh, to uh, morphologically characterize uh, the vegetative and reproductive traits of Colocasia land races available uh, in our periphery uh, so that it can lay a, a foundation for future genetic research. Uh, so the objective of this project was to study the morphological trait of different Colocasia land races and to assess the yield and yield attributing traits and to evaluate and identify suitable land race for the right reason. The study was carried out in Horticultural Research Farm of Agriculture and Forestry University. There were total 12 treatment, that is we took to, uh, total of 12 uh, land races and uh, it was replicated three times and alpha lattice block design was used. Uh, in each replication, there was four blocks and the total uh, study area was 144 square meter. Uh, the treatments used are as shown in the figure, as shown in the table, uh, the slide, and a few um, land races that we collected were unidentified, so we named them after their, uh, so we named them after their area of uh, coll collection, such so as this uh, CP1, RP1, and RS1 are the uh, varieties that were unidentified, so we just named them from the area where they were collected. Uh, we started this uh, research uh, from May. Uh, uh, we collected the land races at the end of June and planted them in July. And the data collection started from the fifth month of planting. Uh, the data collection was done on the basis of descriptors developed by International Plant Genetic Resource Institute. And the uh, vegetative or foliar traits were measured at the five month after planting and the subterranean traits will be evaluated at the harvest. Uh, we have not collected the data of the yield and the subterranean trait that is forms and other. Uh, the quantitative traits uh, were analyzed on the basis of average taken from uh, each uh, random sample and the qualitative traits were, uh, were analyzed on the basis on the first replication of the experiment and the preliminary data analysis was done through MS Excel. Here are some preliminary findings. Uh, this also shows the frequency distribution of uh, Colocasia land races, uh, frequency distribution of characteristics of Colocasia land races. Uh, this table shows that 58% of the land races have has state type of leaf, leaf base, that means uh, small and triangular leaf base, and 91% of the land races have erect apex uh, uh, down type of uh, leaf lamina surface that is pointing downwards, and 58% of the land races have undulated leaf blade margin, that is uh, some something like zigzag kind of leaf blade margin. All of the land races were found to have Y-shaped leaf, uh, leaf pain, and uh, all of them were found to have high level of leaf wax. In, wax. 75% uh, of the land races uh, were uh, exhibits uh, dark green leaf blade color, and uh, only 16% of the land races shows uh, purple uh, color of their of their petiole. Uh, in case of uh, the um, leaf sap, 75% uh, of the land races have transparent leaf sap. This table shows the variation in quantitative traits of Colocasia land races. Here, uh, the table, uh, the column, second, uh, from the second column, uh, there is a plant span, plant height, number of sucker, petiole diameter, leaf lamina to width ratio, and uh, petiole length to lamina length ratio successively. 
and the values are in centimeter uh, the land race hathi pao exhibited uh, the highest uh, plant span plant height and number of sucker uh, and and uh, similarly uh, land race setu dude has uh, the smallest plant span uh, uh, land race setu pidalu has, uh, has the smallest plant height and last uh, land race setu dude has smallest uh, lowest number of uh, sucker similarly land race kalu pidalu has the highest petiole diameter and in case of uh, leaf uh, lamina length to width length uh, dusre Uh, land race so so is the greatest so greatest symmetry uh, in its length and breadth uh, similarly in case of petiole length to leaf length um, the kalu thulu kalu thulu pidalu and uh, rp1 variety uh, land race so is that uh, they have a comparatively larger or longer petiole uh, than their leaf Uh, here are some pictures uh, that were taken uh, during the research activity these pictures shows the land races that were used uh, kalu karkalu and uh, setu pidalu with their purple petiole and light green petiole here are few more land races and these are the pictures taken during data uh, during planting and field layout uh, this is the current situation of our field that this picture was taken few months back before the lockdown Uh, we have uh, not been able to take the data after the lockdown has happened uh, at last i would like to acknowledge napa for providing grant to conduct this research and our local supervisor uh, professor dr madhav pande and professor dr arjun kumar shrestha similarly i would like to thank uh, napa advisor dr anand raj acharya for his feedbacks uh, and i would like to thank our juniors sabin khatiwada priyanka joshi and pooja redmi for their help uh, during data collection and planting thank you thank you very much uh, arati joshi ji uh, it was very good presentation uh, we have plenty of time in fact we have about 4 to 5 minutes of question answers uh, thank you for finishing well within time um so one question for barsha uh, sorry arti ji right away is um, when do you expect to harvest this uh, harvest this uh, pidalu or, or your plants okay uh Uh, the uh, we will uh, uh, in the ninth month of plantation after the in the ninth month of plantation actually it is the right time to harvest but we are unable to harvest it due, due to the lockdown i see all right uh, an another question for you is do all these land races mature at the same time for harvest or differently no no sir uh, in uh, our field we have uh, found that few uh, few plants grow quite uh, well quite um, uh, 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 they grow can i speak in nepali <laughs> a uh, please please no problem kune chai ekdam chane chane grow bhai rako thyo kune ani kune ko chai flowering pani start bhai sakeko thyo spate haru niski sakeko thyo bhane chai kune chai ekdam sanai thyo te bhara chai tinu haru ko growth chai different different nai cha ani harvesting pani harvesting ma pani difference huncha hola kune chai chane kam develop hune kune ko chai dilo hune huncha hola sir i see uh and another question for you is uh, are those land races uh, all edible or how do they, yes. how do people eat uh, you know do you have some ideas uh, the way i like my mother uh, uh, when they the when she made these pidalus i only like mostly hathi pao only okay but mm -hmm. not others so can you tell yes. us about others are edible or not यस सर हामीले चाहिँ फार्मरको फिल्डमा गएर उनीहरुलाई नै सोधेर यो खाना मिल्छ कि मिल्दैन कस्तो किसिमको पिडालु भनेर उनीहरुको फिडब्याक लिदै त्यो ल्यान्ड रिसर्चहरु कलेक्ट गरेको हो त्यो भएर सबै एडिबल नै छ सर सर सबै एडिबल नै छ वन्डरफुल तर कुनै कुनै चाहिँ बढी नै कोक्याउने हुन्छ सायद राम्रोसँग नपाकेर होला हैन डु यु नो व्हाई सम आर सो गुड सम आर नट त्यो पाकेर भन्दा पनि सर त्यो उसको को त्यो कोलोगेसियाको जेनेटिक ट्रेट नै त्यस्तो कुनै हुन्छ होला जसले चाहिँ त्यो कोक्याउने अथवा नकोक्याउने बनाउँछ हामीले फार्मरहरूसँग कलेक्ट गर्दा खेरि नि उनीहरूले पनि कुनै कुनै पिडालुहरू चाहिँ यो चाहिँ कोक्याउँछ यो चाहिँ कोक्याउँदैन भनेर चाहिँ हामीलाई छुट्याउँदै देखाउनु भएको थियो वन्डरफुल अम ओके अ एनी इन 
cooking quality also depends on soil type as well as uh, affected by soil elements. Any thoughts on that? You cook on in Nakoka on your grammar. Okay. This very much my literature review and Goriko China Sarto Kokane, Karen Kio Vanera, the Varate, Oil Kilik, Kul Karen Nun, Sala Vanera, Oil Tama Vanasa Dinasa. Right. Uh, one, uh, maybe the last question. Uh, some people back home uh, or even here also, they use uh, Pinalu uh, or this uh, for Achar. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any specific variety, land race that is suitable for Achar or any difference on that? There was a question on that, okay? Okay. So, I see. Uh, okay, finally, there was one suggestion for you, uh, uh, RTG. Um, that uh, very nice uh, pictures that you have uh, put on towards the end of the presentation. Uh, some suggestions were there that uh, they would look really nice or make more uh, relevance under methods uh, uh, sections, okay? Uh, just to show how the experiments were done. So the pictures would be yeah, suitable over there. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate Aarti Joshiji very much. Thank you so much again. Okay. Um, yeah, you have done a wonderful job. Uh, we'll move you, on sir. to next presentation, uh, which is by Barsa Sarma. Barsa Sarma is affiliated with uh, IAAS of the uh, Tribune University. Uh, I believe it's in, it's in uh, yeah, and then her presentation is Effect of Planting Methods, Residue, and Weed Management on Growth and Yield of Rice at Bhairava, Nepal. Uh, Barsaji, uh, you are good to go for 10 minutes. Uh, if you are able to turn on your video, please do so. Thank you. Let's welcome Barsaji. Sir, sir I, have my, uh, I have made some changes on my slide. If if, if, if the changes are not very substantial, it will be better yeah. if we use our own. If changes are very minimal, uh, we should go with what we have. Uh, otherwise, we'll be losing time. So uh, are the changes very much or very little? No, sir. There are some, uh, some changes, but not so many. So what will be? Then I think you can just go with this one and just... Yeah, I think let's go ahead with what we have, okay? Unless something really very big is there. So, yeah, Let, let's go ahead. Yeah, firstly, good morning. Welcome and, welcome and namaste, everyone. It's me, Barsha Sarma, here to present my research, a final research report. The title of my research is Effect of Planting Method, Crop Residue, and Weed Management on Growth and Yield of Rice which was conducted at Vairava, Nepal. Under my advisory committee, I have Vishnubila Sadhikari and, and Susil Thapa as a local and Napa advisor, respectively. The topic that will be presented on my um, presentation are listed as, uh, for our research, we have considered um, three main problem of rice, that is um, soil degradation due to the in intensive delays, which is, conduct, which, is, which is done during the conventional um, transplanting method. Secondly, the residue boring practice, and thirdly, weed as a major con constraint to the success of rice production in general and to DSR in particular. Uh, under our objective, we have um, broad objective to enhance the productivity of rice through effective weed management and tillage practice. Um, under a specific um, objective, we have to find out the cost effective measure of rice cultivation and weed management to find the interaction effect of delays, use of crop residue and weed management practices to calculate the economic of treatment used in experiment. Now moving on to the method and methodology. Well, this is the site of my experiment um, experimentation, which, are, which is NWRP Bhairava, National Weed Research Center Bhairava. This is the, um, and this is the tested result of um, soil um, of, of my experimental site mm, and the, here it is a figure of mm, figure of maximum and minimum temperature mm, of my research site during my crop period. Similarly, it is the rainfall pattern of, mm, of my experimental site. Well, um, this is the detail of my experimentation. Um, the design that I have used is 
Split split part design with 16 treatments so that were replicated three times. Now moving on to the factors. I have used three factor. This is three factorial experimental design. Now where we have in main plot delays, in soft plot crop residue management, and in soft subplot with management practices. Well, this is this table shows the treatment combination which we have 18 um, treatment combination. Under observation, we have taken phenological observation, ill attributes, ill character, economic analysis. Now moving on to the result and discussion, we have this table shows that um, TLAs have non-significant effect on Ill, Ill and Ill attributes of rice. Uh, some similar re re report where um, similar results were reported by different scientists, um, Reddy and D. Dutta et al., where they find out that no delays and minimum delays system can produce rice yield similar to those produced with conventional delays transplanted method. Similarly, in um, in mulching condition, um, uh, mulching condition, mulch, uh, mulch re retention has shown non significant effect on the grain yield. Similar, however, however, residue retention con condition shows marginally higher yield as compared to no, no residue retention condition. Similar results were reported by Ms. Rital and Gill. And in case of weed management, two manual weeding and one chemical and one manual weeding showed similar result, similar yield followed by two chemical. Whereas in case of no weeding, yield was drastically reduced. Similar result were reported by Chauhan and Adhikari et al. Where in interaction of three factors, Residue and weed management factor were um, was significantly inter interacted in case of granule, historial, and historicity percent. Whereas um, in case of three factors, they were um, non they were not um, interaction were non significant. Um, well, this figure shows the regression analysis where. Effective tiller contributed 99% to the grain yield of rice. Similarly, effective grain for panicles contributed 99% to the grain yield of rice. Well, this is the correlation of ill and ill attributing characters of rice, where we can see that grain yield is 99% correlated to the field grain for panicles. Similarly, we have we have calculated the economic analysis of our research and um, the treatment that were used in our research, where you can see that net return was quite higher in case of minimum delays than as compared to the conventional delays. And in case of mulching, net return was higher in residue management practice because um, the yield were mm, mm, Obtain to be a higher in residue management practice. Similarly, in case of weed management, net region was quite, quite higher in case of one chemical and one manual weeding as compared to two manual weeding. Similar results were reported by different scientists. Conclusion, it is here therefore concluded that um, crop establishment with a minimum tillage with residue retention had a positive impact on crop yield and farm income over conventional um, tillage um, transplanted method. The common advantage of reduced production costs and equal crop produce in minimum tillage direct seeded based crop establishment resulted in a high net return and PC ratio. Here we have, here it is the result demonstrated after only one year of the effect of um, um, conservation agriculture and crop performance, productivity and production economics. The result in long term may be more interesting and prominent which need further, evaluate, further critical assessment. Um, under acknowledgement, I want to thank my local advisor, Vishnu Bilas Adhikari, Sushil Thapa and Napa for providing grant for, um, to facilitate the conduction of my research, and WRP team, Bhairava, friends, and family. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Varsha Ji. It's uh, a It'll very, very dense uh, presentation uh, full of uh, numbers and information. Uh, yes, please, uh, 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 participants, please send your questions uh, for Barsaji. 
Uh, I can start with the one that I just see. Uh, Varsaji, did you note any impact of soil pH, uh, which is 7.73? Hello. Yes, sir. Did you hear the question? Uh, did you uh, did you note any impact of soil pH? No, sir. We have just tested soil for those information only. We did not notice an impact. Okay. Yes. Sir. All right. Uh, I have another question for you uh, that came from a participant. Why two manual wedding were effective in your study compared to manual plus chemical treatment. Could there be any reason for that? Sorry, sir, I didn't understand the question. The question says, why yeah. two, two manual wedding you had, right? Uh, yeah. Were more effective compared to one manual and one chemical treatment. Any reason for that? Nepali, I don't Question, I didn't understand questions, sir. Why two manual waiting with? You have to make a treatment, do it a uh, manual do waiting, a treatment hand, hand, waiting. Hand, wave, oh, hand yes, manual. Yes, sir. Why yes. is that more effective compared yeah. to one manual or hand weeding plus one chemical treatment? Because in case of hand weeding, um, uh, you, there is um, there is more chance of um, controlling weeds uh, in broad spectrum. That means um, in case of um, chemical, sometimes the annual perennial weeds may not be controlled. Um, whereas in case of hand weeding, the um, each and every kind of weeds can be controlled. So this is the main reason. I see. Just. Um, but still, I think you had two manual weeding treatments, correct? Yeah. So why one is uh, better than other manual weeding? I think that was the question. And in thought, I have one chemical and one um, one hand weeding. Okay. I didn't catch yeah. all those treatments, but maybe one mm -hmm. had a hand weeding plus chemical. One was only hand weeding, correct? One, it was two chemical weeding, and uh, second, it was two manual weeding, and third, it is one chemical and one manual weeding. Exactly. So that third yeah. one, one chemical and one manual. Yes, sir. That was not very. Uh, uh, it it was not better compared to two hand weeding, manual hand weeding. Yeah. I think the question was why the manual hand weeding were more effective compared to one manual and one chemical combination. But we have done economic analysis where we can see that uh, need re <coughs> return was quite higher in in case of one chemical and one hand weeding. So we have considered that treatment, sir. All right. Uh, we'll have we'll take one last question, uh, Barsaji, and then we'll move on. What uh, yes, sir. do you think the impact of tillage was not due to the plot size? Plot size. Plot plot size. Plot size. Like impact theory. Yes, um, I think this um, different gap between the two plots. Our plot size will be quite higher to so the impact or or the tillage practice will be um, done for more crop cycles. Then we can see a quite good result. All right, we'll have to wrap up the discussion with Barsaji here now. Okay, okay thank sir. you very much again for taking the questions. So we'll okay, move sir. on to our next presentation by Susmita Sigdalji um, and and her team. Uh, and again, they are also from uh, they are from Agriculture and Forestry University in Rampur. The title of the talk is "Effect of Plant Growth Regulators on Growth, Flowering, and Yield Attributes of Marigold." Susmita ji, you are ready? Hello, you can yes. turn on your video if you could, uh, that'll be better. Uh, if not, go ahead, I'll put you for 10 minutes, okay? Okay, am I audible? You are. Uh, thank you, namaste from Nepal to every distinguished guest, STEAM NAPA and RCBC team and respected mentors. Myself, Susmita Sigdal, representing my group. 
on May 2019, after being ranked as one of the recipients of 2019 Mini Research Grant Program, our energy for doing the research was amplified. With the financial assistance from the same program, we initiated our research project on June, 20, June 2nd week, entitled as Effect of Plant Growth Regulators on Growth, Flowering, and Yield Attributes of Marigold. Going to the background of the research, next slide. Going to the background of the research, marigold is the oldest cultivated ornamental plant and is very popular in tropical and subtropical countries. In case of tagetus, the hormonal imbalances causes non-uniformity in flowering, plant height, and yield proportion. The developmental process can be manipulated with the assistance of plant growth regulators. Moreover, poor mobilization of reserves uh, early senescence, growth inhibition, reduced oil formation, and limited seasonal growth are seen on limiting the plant growth regulators, which reduces the marketability of the loose flower, as well as timely release of the flower to the market. Although the study of the effect of plant growth regulators on marigold performance can be found from around the world, the similar study in case of chitwan condition is limited. Therefore, the objective of the study is to evaluate the effect of concentration of gibralic acid, naphthalic acetic acid, and ethyl on growth, uh, flowering, and ill attribute of marigold, ill attribute of marigold, that is tagetus. The field work was started on second uh, week of June with the cuttings being taken from the nursery, uh, nursery, which was kept before being selected as grant recipient. Those cuttings were kept in the Net house. Then the field was prepared in the last week of July, and those cuttings were transplanted in the first week of August. Simultaneously, pinching was done for about a month, and data was taken in every 15 days interval. Uh, talking about the problems that we encountered during our research, there were weed problems, sex expression, heavy rainfall, and wind, and also it became quite difficult to find hormone in the market. Going to the research method and methodologies, I, our field was located in uh, Horticulture Farm of Agriculture and Forestry University. The chosen plant material was African marigold, that is tagetus species. We opted for random complete block design as the experimental setup. We had nine treatment with four replications that are gibralic acetic acid. Next slide, please. Gibralic acetic acid 300 ppm, gibralic uh, acid 200 ppm, gibralic acid 100 ppm, naphthalic acetic acid 100 ppm, naphthalic acetic acid 200 ppm, ethyl 100 ppm, ethyl 200 ppm, ethyl 300 ppm, and control. There were 36 individual plots of 4.8 meters square with 60 centimeter between the rows and 40 centimeter between individual plot plants. Each plot were, uh, consisted of 20 uh, plants out of which five plants were uh, taken as a sample with total sample being 720. Uh, discussing on the nursery practices that we followed, we applied farm at manure initial, uh, initially and then fine fields was prepared. Thereafter, fumigation was done using 1% formalin solution and then the seeds were shown. Then the cuttings were taken from this plant and those cuttings were raised in net house. Discussing over the main field activities, next slide. Similar to the nursery preparation, after farm yard manure application, primary tillage was done, which was followed by secondary tillage 15 days then after. The recommended dose, uh, that is 120 is to 80 is to 80 kg NPK per hectare with full dose of potassium and phosphorus and half dose of nitrogen was applied as the basal application. At every 15 days interval, the provision of irrigation was made Similarly, the entire research field was made weed free throughout the um, entire crop season. Manual harvesting was started once the flower matured after the onset of uh, the flower. Uh, talking about the study factor, we studied different parameters like under meteorological observation, average monthly data on rainfall, temperature, maximum and minimum, relative humidity during the entire crop growing period was taken from agro meteorological station national maize research program rampur chitwan under the soil observation soil texture total nitrogen soil available phosphorus soil available potassium uh, organic carbon organic matter and soil ph was tested now talking about the phenological data days to uh, uh, first flower initiation, days to opening of first flower, duration of flower, and number of flower per plant were taken. Moreover, biometrical observation that are plant height, 
uh, number of plant branches, number of secondary branches, number of nodes, leaf area index, number of leaf per plant, and others were recorded from five samples plant at 15 days interval. Lastly, under the yield or tributing character, weight of the flower, flower diameter, weight of uh, flower per plant, yield of flower per plant were recorded. Going to the data analysis, the collected data was processed by using MS Excel and the analysis of variance was performed using RStudio. Multiple comparison among the means were tested using Donkans multiple range test MRT as 5% level of significance. Now discussing over the result, the application of 300 ppm of gibberellic acid resulted in the highest value for plant height, that is 92.77 centimeter, number of branches 34.43, plant growth 2.58 centimeter, duration of flowering 70.98 uh, days, flower per plant 73.18, flower diameter 7.33 centimeter, fresh weight of the flower 19.25 gram, and the yield 1409.03 gram per plant with the same treatment that resulted in the lowest uh, value for the days to the first flower initiation, that is 49.06 days. Therefore, the application of gibberellic acid 300 ppm can be recommended to enhance the pl uh, plant growth and flower yield of Marigold, sharing about our experience during research, it is very necessary to be careful while taking cuttings and the flower in the mother plant should be firm and rigid. Utmost care must be taken while transplanting as there is high chance of uh, fungal infection during rainy season. Affected plant must be discarded in order to protect the main field. As the flower is cultivated during uh, rainy season, there is a serious problem of weed. We also observe the problem of water logging and damping off. There is problem of sex expression due to which the plant seedlings were picked off and then next seedlings were transplanted. For further research recommendation, we can study about plant date, density on phenological, physiological indices. In addition to this impact of drought in sex expression can also be studied. Before summing up my presentation, I would like to introduce my co-researcher, Gaurav Adhikari. Mr. Adhikari is a final year um, undergraduate student of agriculture science at Agriculture and Forestry University. As of his present engagement, he is head of CSA Organic Farm and is involved in various academic researches. Pritika Adhikari, Ms. Adhikari is a third year undergraduate student in agriculture science at SEM University. As of her present engagement, she is a council member of US Embassy Youth Council and regional ambassador of international organization Thought for Food. Susil Khanal, Ms. Mr. Khanal is a second year undergraduate student in the same university. As of his present engagement, he has been involving himself on non profitable youth organization in various academic researches as well. Lastly, myself, Susmita Sigdal, I am also a Council member of US Embassy Youth Council and Regional Ambassador of Thought for Food. At the end, I would like to since I would like to acknowledge my professor and local advisor, Mr. Bisal Shrestha sir, Napa advisor, Mr. Siva Mokazu sir, Napa USA and RCBC committee for providing us with the assistance that motivated us to carry out the research. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sushmita ji. That was very uh, uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, and well on time. Uh, I have a few questions uh, <clears throat> arriving to us. <clears throat> so do you have any information on the purity of the cultivars that you, uh, of the marigold that uh, you have uh, uh, used from the nursery manager? Purity. Uh, we... Shall I proceed? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, we bought seed from the agrovit which uh, and there was uh, uh, their germination purity, purity test germination test which was already done and it was above 80 and so we took that uh, cultivar so 80% purity you would say is that um, what it is? In, in chiton condition um, we could know we soiled in many uh, that aggravates, but we could not find more than that. So we opted for that. I see. <clears throat> uh, one more question on variety. Uh, I do not know whether the name of the variety is uh, African variety uh, uh, or why were there no Nepali variety? Uh, any specific reason to pick African marigold variety? 
in case of uh, nepal mostly uh, used uh, variety is african marigold which uh, which that farmers horticulturists which are involved in entrepreneurial floriculture they mostly use that african marigold uh, due to its um, easier and quick initiation of flower first flowering i think so i see uh, there was uh, another question how this lai was measured was that a destructive method or non destructive method that was to destructive method okay like could you quickly tell how was it measured is it possible uh like using destructive method means we pinched it out and then we took using um, how to say like you, we opted for destructive method only all right uh, okay uh was that using any instrument or graph paper or uh, that's why the destructive or non destructive method uh, the question follow up on that lai index measurement yeah uh, we collected like there was extreme heat and uh, we could not uh, conduct that particularly on the field so we took that and somebody was we trying took that to, help. to the lab and we conducted yeah. uh, i would just like to intervene uh, i was there for while taking the leaf area meter we just collected the leaf and we went to our lab there is a uh, instrument that can uh, measure the leaf area automatically you just have to put uh, the leaves onto that machine uh, it right. uses the uh, technology of light it impedes the light and it gives the value so we did it it, it is uh, called leaf area meter yeah yeah oh, right. leaf, area leaf area meter wonderful um okay one maybe one last question for you uh, has there been any study to see the impact of pgr application on the shelf life of the flower i do not know yeah, what pgr is, is but uh, that was the question yeah there is there we have seen the literature review that people have used the same pgr they have seen the uh, the <laughs> kept the uh, effect of pgr until the shelf life of marigold but since we have only limited budget and since we were running out of time during that our research so we have to limit our research up to the harvest we could not uh, extend our research up to the market uh, up to the to in order to see the shelf life but we have uh, quite a few research which has seen uh, the application of pgr on the shelf life all right thank you very much again both of you for a wonderful presentation and interaction okay so we'll move on to next presentation which uh, is uh, the video recording uh, by madan suvidi of ag and forestry university afu in rampur chitwan uh, napa advisors uh, are uh, dr mega parajuli and dr bola gautam so please go ahead uh, start the video uh, i do not, uh, maybe uh, dev ji can start probably right warm greetings to all of you i am madan subedi currently studying masters in entomology in agriculture and forestry university rampur chiton i would like to welcome you all in my presentation on my research species diversity of grass over fauna orthoptera in rice ecosystem of central nepal which i accomplished last year under the guidance of dr meganath farajuli from napa and mr bola gautam from agriculture and forestry university i would like to start with introduction insect pest are considered as one of the major loss incurring factors which adhikari et al have reported to cause a loss of 25 to 30 percentage in rice among the various insect pest present in rice orthopterans are considered as the major insects orthopterans are one of the least explored group of insect in nepal and uh, just a few researches have been conducted in nepal and these all are done by foreigners to name uh, bevienko uh, and in and english have done a significant research in uh, orthopterans of nepal uh, and english have prepared a checklist comprising of 311 species and the species composition is found to differ with a uh, mean altitude above sea level and different localities however no information is available on species diversity of orthoptera on rice cropping systems in nepal in this regard this study was done to assess the species diversity of orthopterans in rice ecosystem 
of Central Nepal, which was the general objective of this research. And the specific objectives of this research were to achieve documentation of Orthoptera species from different locations and establish a basis for identification of Orthopterans in rice crops. Materials and Methods The grasshopper samples were collected from different localities of Central Nepal and for this uh, three dif distinct geographical locations separated by 500 meter mean altitude above sea level were selected and the selected sites were surveyed once a month from nursery to ripening stages of rice from June to October of 2019. Sampling was done using an aerial net or sweeping net or by hand picking were feasible and these collected some specimens were kept alive uh, for studying their morphological characters in a jar and they, they were fed grass and the grass was changed daily and the variation um, in their morphological characters were studied. The names were raised uh, till they turned to adult so that they could be easily identified. And these adults were identified under a stereo microscope following identification keys from different available literature. And the study site selected were Rampur Chiton located at an altitude of 258 meters above sea level, Modivani Parvat at 758 meters above sea level and Kairimta Parvat located at an altitude of 1258 meters above sea level. You can see the location of these study sites on maps on this slide. Results All the collected species were uh, were identified and a list of the species diversity of orthoptera fauna in rice system of central Nepal was prepared and a total of 16 species were reported uh, in rice crop which uh, belonged to two families uh, that is Acrididae and Pyrgomorphidae. Acrididae was the largest one comprising of 15 species while Pyrgomorphidae had just a single species. Likewise, uh, tens of families were reported as you can see here and now I like to move on to the previous slide to explain it furthermore. Among the subfamilies, Oxini subfamily had the highest number of species that is 5 species followed by Acridini, Catantopini and Oedipodini all comprising of 2 species. Likewise, Gomposerini, Ipropocnamidini, Oedipodini Hemiacridini and Spathoesternini. These subfamilies comprised of a single species each. Likewise, the total number of species, um, total number of species um, collected were found to be maximum in Modibani and uh, Kairimta, that is 11 each, while Rampur had 5 species. And the collected species and the then the main major species collected were Acrida aggregata of subfamily Acridini of family Acrididae, while the single species of the uh, family Pyrgomorphidae was Attractomorpha cranulata, and it is well known uh, paste of various uh, crops of family uh, Poesi. Likewise, Aulacobotrus lutipes of family Gomposerini, Ipropocnemis alacris of subfamily Ipropocnemidini. Heteropteris respondents of subfamily Oedipodini, Heroglyphus banyan of subfamily Hemiacridini uh, were also found. And several species of uh, the genus Oxia were found, and Oxia are commonly known as rice grasshoppers and are known to feed on rice. And these uh, Oxia uh, have recently been uh, found to attack the rice crop, rice and maize as well, in large number in Bardia district. And uh, different uh, uh, species of the genus Oxia that I reported uh, are Oxia fuscovitata, Oxia grandis, Oxia hyla, Oxia japonica, and Oxia velox. Likewise, Flava infumata of subfamily Acridini, Spathosternum prasiniferum of subfamily Spathosternini, Sternocatantops splendens of subfamily Catantopini, Trilophidia anlata of subfamily Oedipodini, and Xenocatantops humilis of subfamily Catantopini were also reported. And I have already talked about species composition, composition summary. Total species 16, family 2, subfamily 10. And, and after the uh, preparation of a list of the species of orthopteran found to feed on rice, 
we have also prepared an identification key following the distinct morphological characters which will have be equally useful to identify the orthopteran uh, pest of the rice crops and and uh, these uh, key are a bit long and uh, they are uh, and they are based on description of the characters of the species so they could not be fit on single slide so i have prepared uh, three slides and you can consult this slide for further information we have time limitations so i am not going to each and every characters of this slide and we are, and i have come uh, to the end of the presentation and i like to thank my advisor uh, dr meganath parajuli uh, for helping me to prepare the final report guiding me continuously through the, out the, this study period and helping me to prepare this slide and i like also like to thank uh, the department of entomology uh, and mr bola gautam for the support in this research likewise i would like to also re, re, i would also like to thank my friends and relatives who were always with me during the process of sampling i would also like to thank the orthopteric society who also um, helped me to conduct this research and i would like to extend my apologies not to appear in uh, person uh, for this uh, presentation and due to in, due to various difficulties as i had a problem with my laptop and internet facilities hopefully you will understand my problems and for any queries you can uh, consult my advisor dr meganath farajuli thank you all right uh, that was a nice presentation uh, in absentia by madan uh, um, so let's appreciate uh, him uh, any questions uh, as he suggested we can direct the questions to dr farajuli okay and he is around here so please any you questions know, about while, the presentation go yeah, ahead while uh, yeah. folks are writing questions or maybe uh, i'll just make comment that uh, this individual uh, just uh, had uh, you know lots of issues with the uh, landslides and all the environmental things and he just uh, he couldn't do this i'm i'm kind of impressed that uh, he could at least uh, put it together and send it to uh, us and uh, i can tell you that uh, uh the the effort here yes all the researchers uh, had to go through this uh, uh, length of uh, effort in collecting data but uh, collecting grasshoppers all over the country uh, mm -hmm. that was a, that was a messy task and uh, i was thoroughly impressed with his amount of work and dedication to work but it's unfortunate that uh, he could not defend his research here in front of all of us yeah uh, mega sir i will, I, I have one quick uh, just a curiosity only uh, he did say that these grasshoppers did not eat the rice themselves right although they are called rice grasshoppers they did not eat rice uh, that um, and how, how do they what do they eat then or how do they survive no not all the grasshoppers uh, eat uh, you know they are uh, uh, the plant feeders they would not okay. eat actual rice the grains but they eat small they plants live. okay so they cut plants but not necessarily all those species uh, 16 species would damage rice plants but they would they would occur in rice fields but only few species would be uh, very harmful pests of rice let's see Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing uh, none, uh, no comments, questions. Uh, we'll, I think, we'll do well moving on, uh, onto a presentation from Dang Campus uh, um, of uh, IAS. Uh, the the presentation is by Sabina Powdell, and you can see the title is "Effect of Different Doses of Phosphorus on Growth and Flowering of Marigold." um so let's welcome sabina powder thank you dr buddhi lansal and a warm welcome to everyone attending first napa sponsored research mini grant project conference day second i'm here to present 
Second year research result on our research title, Effect of Different Doses of Phosphorus on Growth and Flowering of Marigold, which is a three-year research project, and it's me, Sabina Powdell, representing our research group. Without delay, let's move forward for the introduction of marigold. Marigold order asterials and family asteraceae or composite. Marig there are two types of marigold, African marigold tegetus erecta and French marigold tegetus patula. French is smaller than African marigold. Duke tegetus erecta is native to Mexico. It is called as African marigold. Marigold is annual plant. It is mainly yellow in color. Gentophil gives then yellow color. We can find the variety of color in marigold, like it's orange, yellow, red, or mixed. Marigold is rich in, uh, even in essential oil content. Marigold are valued for their ornamental, medicinal, and religious properties. Ornamental, they are beautiful and appealing. Medicinal essential oil content ha has great medicinal properties. And religious, they have, thus they have uh, great demand during the TR festival. A statement of problem. Despite having great pot greater potentiality of floriculture development, this sector is still at very early stage of establishment. Here, in this pie chart, we can see 80% of the flower demand in our market runs after runs on the domestic production. Uh, it is denoted by uh, orange color, and uh, um, but the rest, 20%, depends upon Indian production. This import. Uh, amounts to our uh, rupees 100 and 10 million per year. And if there is a problem, there exists a uh, possibility to fix it and um, be better. So uh, inputs are, imports are decreasing annually, as said by Kumar Kajusresta, Kajusresta, president of Floriculture Association Nepal. Every plant need every plant needs balance in our application of nitrogen phosphorus to well perform, and phosphorus has huge importance in photosynthesis, growth, and flowering. The objective of our research was to study the effect of phosphorus in flowering of marigold. The objective of our research was to study the effect of phosphorus in flowering of marigold, as well as to study the ill-determining factors of marigold, like its height, number of flowers, etc to find the optimum dose of phosphorus for marigold cultivation, to study the response of plants for different doses of phosphorus, to find the best economic income uh, input option for marigold cultivation, that is to find which dose of phosphorus is optimum to give best economic outcome. Moving forward for materials and matter, uh, our field location was same as previous year, that is our campus premises, campus of life sciences, Tulsi Budang. Our three month field project work was conducted in 2019, July to October. Randomized complete block design practice. There were seven treatments with different doses of phosphorus. That is 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120 kg phosphorus per hectare. Three replication of each treatment was done. There were 21 plots and each plot had 20 plants. We used simple random sampling without replacement uh, technique um, among 20 plants, uh, data were collected only from five plants, five inner plants. No data were collected from the uh, the border plant. And these are the parameters of study: uh, plant height, number of branches, days to bird, first bird appearance, days to first flowering, number of flowers per plant, fresh flower weight, flower diameter, total yield per plant. Agronomical practices. Nursery raising was done in plastic tray on cocoa feed. 25th July was the date of sowing. Uh, for the proposal, uniform light to ceiling, construction of poly house was done. Layout, total field area was 207 meters square with individual plot of area 2.5 into 2 meters square. Manures and fertilizer, nitrogen, potash, and post, uh, poultry manure were same for every treatment that is 15 ton per hectare poultry manure, 200 kg per hectare nitrogen, and 90 kg per hectare potash, but the phosphorus dose were different. That is treatment one, zero kg per hectare, treatment two, 20 kg per hectare. There are seven treatment with 20 kg difference between each treatment. 
The transplanting was done in 18th August and 420 uh, plants were transplanted. Gap filling of seedling uh, need to be um, done because, um, because of the damage of cot cotworm. Hoeing earthing up um, was done twice. Uh, weeding was also done twice and irrigation as well. Um, during all these stages of crop, um, the cotworm damaged marigold and as well as leaf miner. Uh, so cariomycin was sprayed uh, to control leaf miner. Harvesting was done twice, 19th and 26th October. Um, result and discussion. It is the table for obesity parameter of study. In first column, um, you can see uh, there are different doses of phosphorus, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120. Uh, from last row, the highlighted one, we can, uh, we can see that only number of branches per plant and plant height at 28 days after transplanting are significant. The um, asterisk um, signif uh, signifies that they, are, they have significant results. 80 kg per hectare gave the highest number of branches per plant and 100 kg per hectare gave the largest height of plant at 28 days after transplanting. But here, here in the productive uh, parameters of study, 80 kg per hectare seems to be optimum dose of phosphorus for all most uh, for almost all parameter. Now here is the comparison between two successive Napa research. Uh, now here is conclusion and recommendation. Uh, the parameters with darker sets are significant to the difference in dose of phosphorus. As we see, treatment five gives the maximum value for more parameters and this also gave highest benefit cost ratio. Thus, we recommend 80 kg per hectare of phosphorus dose in the condition of Dang Tulsipur. The comparison between two successive Napa research on marigold. Number of branches, uh, four parameters. Number of branches, plant height, uh, early bird appearance, Number of flowers per plant has the same result in both successive year, while four different four has different result. The previous research findings showed that 100 kg per hectare phosphorus is optimum for uh, for that condition, but in the same condition, besides some small variation, current research findings show that 80 kg per hectare give, gives better result than 100 kg per hectare. Here are some glimpses of our research. Uh, first is the uh, picture of marigold seedlings in plastic tray, plastic tray, and second is the field after layout and um, tagging. Third is the uh, photo taken when our friend Lakshmi uh, Lakshmi Pandey was uh, was doing earthing up. Fourth is the field at the time of harvesting. At last, I like to acknowledge. Um, and express our special thanks of gratitude and appreciation to this Savitri Research Mini Grant, uh, NAPA, Nepalese Agriculture Research uh, Professional of America, our major advisor, Assistant Professor Manoj Basnet, and NAPA advisor, Prem Bandari. Uh, at last, we'll, uh, we'd like to thank all the individual and organizations who helped us directly or indirectly for the completion of research and our beloved parents and friends and families. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Savina Ji, uh, for a wonderful, very interesting presentation, uh, and your t to, to your team as well. Okay, so um, here are a few questions for you that, uh, as I get, I'll ask you, and you'll uh, reply hopefully. Uh, where is uh, marigold commercially cultivated in Nepal? Is the Dang Tulsipur area is the major hub, or you have different places? And whether your recommendation that you have might be equally applicable to other places as well. Um, marigold can be um, equally grown in Torai and um, Ili areas of Nepal. And this, uh, the, the soil, con soil of Mary, Mary calls, Mary calls our campus premises was uh, a bit like um, clay type, type and that was, that this research result can be applicable to that kind of soil, I think. 
Okay, uh, that was the buzz for 10 minutes. So we still have question answer about two minutes. Okay, so uh, you did show the, the graph that 20% uh, is uh, coming from India and 80% uh, is consumed uh, in uh, produced in Nepal itself, right? So, yes. so do you know uh, what percent of total marigold grown in country in Nepal is native species rather than let's say African or foreign species? That was a question. Yeah. I don't know exact exactly how much percent is native and how much um, is the um, foreign species, but the native species is grown more than the foreign species. I see. All right. Uh, another question is, uh, how was the phosphorus applied? Um, any instances of phytotoxicity at higher dose of applications? Did you see any uh, instance of toxicity because of your application? No, uh, we didn't see any phytotoxic uh, effect of phosphorus. Uh, we applied phosphorus during our field preparation before uh, transplanting. Uh, so uh, so uh, we didn't see that kind of any hydroxic effect. I see. Uh, but uh, during our during our course of uh, uh, course of practices, um, uh, we used uh, thyra then that uh, biological kind of uh, control measure for uh, for cotoms to prevent from um, phytotoxic effect. Well, I think you know, we use trichoderma uh, to I see to prevent phytotoxic effect. I see, uh, but do you have any literature or any other information on whether phosphorus is associated with aesthetic quality of the flower? For example, size, color, vigor, post-harvest uh, long longevity or any other attributes uh, do you other than yield you know like you maybe you have focused mostly on yield you know how much it go um, grows uh, but do you think phosphorus might impact other attribute of the plant itself size color and all that any any information there uh, yes we have got uh, various literature review it uh, it also significantly increased number of uh, number of uh, flowers in uh, a plant, and uh, and in some we we we, we could see that 120 kg per hectare uh, phosphorus give a double or like that uh, double the yield of uh, phosphorus uh, marigold and like that. All number right. of, number and branches were. Uh, um, mostly seen in literature reviews. I see. So, That's but it. the question was whether it also impacted uh, other things like size or the vigor or color of the uh, of the plant uh, or the flower rather. Not only the no, not only the color, yield. Uh, we didn't see. We didn't find that uh, during our right. uh, preparation of book and uh, research pro uh, report. We didn't find the. Uh, effect in color and the size. Size. All right. Uh, okay, uh, Savinaji, so, thank you very much. Uh, it's a, a very uh, interesting talk. We are running out of time here. Uh, I think uh, very. Uh, there are more comments, questions uh, relevant. Uh, I'd like uh, you to be uh, uh, around for plenary discussion. Okay. Thank you very much again. So we'll you, move sir. on to next presentation here uh, 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 by. Sristi Upadhyay uh, from Agriculture and Forest University. Uh, the title of the presentation here is Production and Marketing of Ginger, a case study in Salan District, Nepal. Sristi Upadhyay, please go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you very well. If you can turn on your video, that will be wonderful. So because my internet connection, because my internet connection is not so stable, sir. So I may not be able to share my video. No problem. Is that yes. okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, please go ahead. Audio is fine. Okay. Thank you, sir. Namaste. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody so much for being here. My name is Rishi Upadhyay. I am a BSAG graduate from Agriculture and Forestry University. 
The title of my research presentation is Production and Marketing of Ginger, a Case Study in Salyan District, Nepal. I am forever grateful towards my advisor from Napa, Dr. Leela B. Karkisar, and my local advisor, Associate Professor Dr. Om Prakash Singh, sir, for their valuable guidance throughout my study. Next slide, sir. The general objective of my study was to assess the economics of production and marketing status of ginger in Salyan district. My specific objectives were as follows, to investigate the socioeconomic status of ginger producers in Salyan district, to analyze benefit cost ratio and gross margin of ginger in the study area, to assess the present marketing channel and marketing margin of ginger, likewise to analyze the production and marketing constraints of ginger cultivation in the study area. My study sites comprised of Sarada and Bakchur municipality and Siddhakumak rural municipality of Salyan district. The areas were purposely selected as major ginger cultivated area of ginger turmeric zone under PMAMP project. Figure one is about map showing study areas in Salyan district. Next slide, please. Data collection was done through structure questionnaire survey Questionnaires were pre-tested in 10% of total sample households. Out of 568 ginger producing farmers, 60 farmers, which represented 10.56% of the total population were selected as sample for the survey. List of ginger growing farmers were obtained from ginger turmeric zone, Solan district. Altogether, five traders were selected for interview. Data entry was done in MS Excel. Data analysis was performed by using IBM SPSS. Descriptive analysis of data, conferring to that of ginger producers was performed. Next slide, please. Moving on to the results and discussions. My sample size comprised of 60 households with an average family number of 6.58. 53% of the respondents were male and 47% of the respondents were female. 61.67% of the respondents were Chhetri, followed by so-called Dalits, Janazati, Sanyasi, Brahmin, and Thakuri. 81% of the respondents were literate, whereas 19% of the respondents were illiterate. Majority of the people, 60.17%, was in the economically active age group. Figure 2 shows occupation of the respondents in the study area. Most of the people, 55%, depending on the agriculture for their livelihood, followed by abroad and agriculture, 20%. Alum made agriculture, 15% were involved in services and 10% in business. Next slide. Table one shows the production status of ginger compared to total land area. The average land holding size of the people in this area was 0 0.80 hectare. Among that average land, area under ginger cultivation was 0 0.13 hectare with production of 14.44 ton per hectare. Table two shows the price of different form of ginger in rupees per kg. Farmers in the study site uh, were sold the ginger in a different form, that is dry ginger, which is called as suto, seed rhizome, mother rhizome, as well as the fresh ginger. On an average, the selling price of dry ginger was rupees 201.42 per kg, followed by seed rhizome, which was sold for rupees 80.41 per kg. Similarly, the average selling price of mother rhizome was rupees 68.87, followed by fresh ginger, which was sold for rupees 29.34 per kg. Next slide. Table three shows cost of ginger cultivation per hectare. It was found that the highest cost was incurred for seed rhizome, that is 47.61%. The cost of seed was usually higher than the fresh ginger, and therefore, the major part of the cost was contributed by seed. According to the findings, the average cost of production of ginger per hectare was rupees 4,20,000. The cost of production for one kg of ginger was rupees 32.08. Next slide, please. Table four shows the gross income from different form of ginger in rupees per hectare. 60 out of 60 farmers stored their ginger as seed for next year and therefore contributing the highest average return 
compared to other forms of ginger. Table five shows the benefit cost ratio of ginger. Benefit cost analysis shows that farmers were making profit of rupees 2,26,742.8 per hectare while cultivating ginger. It was found that the benefit cost ratio for harvested different form of ginger was 1.53. Next slide, please. Six shows the market margin and producer share of study area. The, in case of fresh ginger, farm gate price was rupees 29.34. Retailer's price was rupees 55 with market margin of 25.66 and producer share of 53.34 percentage. Similarly, in case of dry ginger, farm gate price was rupees 201.42. Retailer's price was rupees 270 with market margin of 68.58 and producer's share of 74.6%. Mother rhizome in case of uh, in case of mother rhizome, farm gate price was rupees sixty eight point eight seven. Retailer's price was rupees ninety, with market margin of twenty one point one three and producer share of seventy six point five two percent. In case of seed rhizome, farm gate price was rupees eighty point four one. Retailer's price was rupees one hundred ten, with market margin of twenty nine point five nine and producer share of seventy three point one percent. Among all other forms of ginger. The producer's share in case of fresh ginger was lowest and highest in case of mother rhizome. Next slide, please. Figure shows the market channel of ginger in, any, in the study area. Producers and traders were the major actor in marketing system. Producers were compelled to sell mostly on the price fixed by the traders in the production sites and the market centers. Almost all the farmers were found selling their products to the local collectors in the local market without any intermediaries. The local collector further sold the ginger to the wholesalers or Indian traders. Some of the wholesalers sold the ginger in the Indian markets and some were found selling the ginger in the domestic markets in Nepal, such as Salyan, Nepalganj, Oirava, Kathmandu, Dang, Sulkhet. So from the domestic, uh, from different domestic markets in Nepal, it was further sold to the retailers in different markets of Nepal and finally sold to the consumers. Next slide, please. Table seven shows the production in ginger, problems in ginger production. All the 68 ginger producers were asked to rank the problems in ginger production. According to the priority ranking of the producers, rhizome rot was found to be the most problematic, while the dry rot was ranked as least problematic. Table eight shows the problems in ginger marketing. The first market problem as ranked by the producers was low market price of ginger, and quality issue was ranked at list, indicating consumers prefer the prevailing quality of ginger in the study area. Next slide, please. Conclusion, the respondent population was comprised of almost equal number of males and females, in which 81% of the respondents were lead trade. Agriculture was found to be the major source of income, Productivity of ginger in the study area was 14.44 metric ton per hectare, which was higher than the national average and district average. Despite many problems, the ginger production in the study area was a profitable business with benefit cost ratio of 1.53 and gross margin of rupees 2,26,742.8 per hectare. The market channel in the study area was farmers, local collectors, wholesalers, and Indian traders, export market, and domestic market. Market margin in the study area was found to be relatively higher for dried ginger, followed by seed rhizome, fresh ginger, and mother rhizome. Rhizome rot was found to be the major problem in production, and low market price of ginger was found to be the major marketing problem. Next slide, please. My special thanks goes to PMA MPC in Ginger Jones Salyan. Agriculture and Forestry University, advisory panels, classmates, and entire Napa family. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Susmita uh, Baini. Uh, wonderful talk, very informative. Uh, we have some time for questions, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read a few questions to you as time allows, OK? Uh, yes, and many sir. of the questions are around the uh, cultivation and uh, marketing, in fact. Uh, so do you think um, 
are there any cooperatives for uh, ginger cultivation as well as marketing involved cooperatives if there, not far okay go ahead there were there were very few cooperatives sir and uh, and if there were the, the more cooperatives uh, automatically the marketing system was would be great uh, but uh, according to my view uh, there were very low cooperatives i see and not so effective and and these farmers uh, that you have um, interviewed uh, <clears throat> were there any contract farmers do you know yes. for contract farmers like they they grow mm -hmm. for some uh, somebody some company no sir uh, or because uh, uh, there was one question about nothing like that sir one specific yes, project uh, ifpri project mm -hmm. specifically uh, contract farming on ginger in the particular area so your sample or your interview farmers uh, uh, subject uh, people were not involved in contract farming right is that what it is yes sir yes sir they were totally not involved in contract farming and because uh, i think uh, the research the in the previous years uh, there was such kind but according to my perspective there were no such involved in contract farming and so on all right uh, what scale did you use to assess marketing problem um, that was a question um, what scale he says uh, i believe uh, maybe the size or maybe ramji sir himself could ask the question what do you mean by oh, scale yeah. No, no, no. I, I saw some uh, yeah, data presented there uh, about the marketing problem uh, and their yes, range. Sir. You know, so what scale did you use? Was it uh, from one to five? I mean, uh, like that. Yes, sir. The same one to five scale was used. Oh, got you. So, uh -huh, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's good. Okay, uh, one more question and then maybe we'll wrap it up. <clears throat> For the management of the rhizome rot, the disease rhizome rot, is there any specific management practices yes, used by the farmers? Uh, yes, across? sir. In case some of the uh, respondent, um, I didn't cover because of the uh, limitations of slide. Uh, only uh, eighteen percent of the respondents were found uh, treating the uh, treating seeds, and the rest were unaware about the seed treatment. So they are. So in that in that area, the rise and growth was major problematic. All right, uh, thank you very much again. Uh, yes, uh, and then we'll move on to next uh, presentation. Okay, thank you again, Susmita. Okay, Bye. Thank you so much. Yep, uh, but thank you so stick much. around. There might be more questions during plenary sessions. <laughs> sure, sir. Sure. sure. <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's so see. Uh, I think uh, that's the end of our scheduled presentation, right? Uh, so now we want to invite uh, Professor Bishnu Pandeji. Have you rejoined, Bishnu Pandey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I think you are uh, up next. Uh, are you ready with your slide? Yes, sir. Yes, I am ready. Yes. Sir. Uh, you can share your screen. Uh, Dr. Pandey is assistant professor from Kathmandu University, uh, Department of Chemical Science and Engineering. And the topic of his presentation is antioxidant alpha amylase inhibition assay and quantification of major flavonoid uh, in soybean and soy food found in Nepal. This is maybe in Kathmandu area more focused to. So uh, <clears throat> Dr. Pandey, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Professor Lamsal, and um, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Bishnu Prasad Pandey. I'm working as assistant professor at the Department of Chemical Science and Engineering. So uh, we work closely with the Professor Buddhi Lamsal on the project. So title is Antioxidant Alpha Amylase Inhibition Assay and Quantification of the Major Flavonoid Dyson and Genistein in Soybean and Soy food found in Nepal. So I'm going to briefly uh, share with you our research finding. So introduction, flavonoids are the diverse group of phytochemicals that are produced by various plant species. Uh, flavonoids are widely found in different plant species, uh, basically in the legumes uh, plants. Uh, based on the skeleton, they are divided into different classes. Uh, 
like flavones, flavanones, isoflavon, flavone, isoflavon, and thymine, talcone, and flavonilin. So these flavonoids play the very important role in the defense mechanism in the plants, uh, and also in the plant growth and the development. Uh, soy products, actually, uh, people start consuming a lot of soy product, uh, thinking that these are very uh, beneficial for the human because they had a, a diverse uh, phytonutrients such as phenolic and flavonoids compound. So that's the reason why soy products are believed to have a diverse biological activity and it, it functions. So we try to examine some of these biological activity. So our, our uh, study focused on the investigation of the biological activity of the tofu. We focus on the tofu uh, collected from the Kathmandu and also uh, quantification of the total phenolic and flavonoid content as well as identification of the metabolite from uh, high performance liquid chromatography. So briefly, if you look at the structure of the flavonoids, so you can see in the slide that isoflavonoids, basically isoflavone, flavone, flavanone, chalcone, and flav these are some of the basic skeleton of the flavonoids. And uh, overall, the project outline is a tofu collected from the Kathmandu, and we try to identify uh, the total phenolic and flavonoid content in the in the tofu extract. Tofu is extracted uh, uh, using the methanol as a solvent, and then uh, we check the antioxidant activities. Also, we ch check the alpha amylase. Sorry, this is the alpha amylase, and also SPLC uh, uh, identification of flavonoid. So. Overall materials involved, the determination of total phenolic content, we use the aluminum chloride colorimetric acid using UV visible spectrophotometer. And also we try to identify the uh, total phenolic content present in the tofu with uh, folene uh, reagents and also antioxidant activity from the DPPS and the alpha glu uh, glucosidase and alpha amylase inhibition, basically from PNPZ. So talking to the alpha amylase uh, inhibition activities, so uh, the alpha amylase enzymes are uh, very uh, uh, widely used and it, 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 it actually function for the breakdown of the glycosidic bond uh, and releasing a lot of glucose. People used to consume a lot of carbohydrate and the alpha amylase enzyme present there help to break down the glycosidic bond and glucose uh, it releases. And there are a lot of report that plant metabolite actually inhibit the enzyme alpha amylase. So inhibition of that enzyme alpha amylase has some beneficial uh, you know, uh, effect to the person who are suffering from the hyperglycemia uh, diabetes. So they lower down the carbohydrate breakdown and absorption. So they lower the diabetic problem and lower the blood uh, sugar level as well. So that is why we are uh, interested to see whether the tofu, you know, consuming a tofu, people are consuming tofu in Nepal as well. Uh, also, the soy products are quite popular uh, in, 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 in developed country as well. So uh, the tofu sample collected from the Kathmandu Valley, we examine this alpha amylase inhibition activity. Uh, the result is uh, the total phenolic content and total flavonoid contents. So we measure the total phenolic and flavonoid content and we uh, find out that the phenolic content and flavonoid contents are very high. Uh, if you look at the graph, the phenolic contents were expressed as a gallic acid equivalence and the flavonoid content was expressed as a curicetin equivalent. So 40.5 milligram gallic acid per gram dry weight of the tofu. So it's relatively, uh, you know, higher amounts uh, uh, in the, in the in the tofu and also we measure the antioxidant activity using the dpps radical scavenging activity uh, in different concentrations so concentration range from 20 to 100 microgram per ml of tofu and our result shows that uh, increasing the concentration of the tofu extract increases the scavenging tendency so you can see from the graph also and based on that we measure the 50 inhibitory concentration is the IC50 value. So we found out that the IC50 value of the tofu, uh, methanolic extract of tofu was 61.28 uh, uh, microgram per ml. And similarly, we measured the alpha amylase inhibition activity. So alpha amylase inhibitory activity uh, concentration from 200 to microgram per ml to one milligram per ml as the concentration increases, the inhibitory potential also increases and based on that we measure the uh, 
inhibitory concentration as IC50 value. So we found out that this uh, tofu extract has 746.8 microgram per ml as IC50 value. And also we measured these high performance liquid chromatography. I was interested to see the, what kind of flavonoids are contained. So we had authentic uh, compound genistein and diazine. So, so I, it, I compared the SPLC chromatogram with our authentic sample, the genistein and diazine. So tofu extract contained the, the genistein and diazine. So it was confirmed from the SPLC. And uh, this is the overall results. Uh, in the conclusion, our result revealed that tofu collected from the Kathmandu Valley are very rich source of flavonoid and phenolic compound. And further, the tofu methane extract with the good antioxidant and alpha amylase inhibitory activity. Also, our SPLC analysis revealed that it is a rich source of flavonoid, evident from the presence of isoflavone molecules like xenistin and diazin. And uh, I would like to acknowledge the NAPA for the grant support to carry out the basic research. And also like to uh, you know acknowledge our Department of Chemical Science and Engineering at Kathmandu University for basic laboratory support, and also like to acknowledge Professor Dr. Buddhi Lamsal for uh, you know support to accomplish this project. So that's all. Thank you so much. If you have thank any you. question, I'm I'm really happy to answer the question. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pandey, uh, Bishnu Pandeji. Um, very interesting. Uh, presentation there. Uh, please comments, questions, uh, suggestions for Dr. Pandey, please, please put in that chat box, comment box, uh, it will come out here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I have one question, uh, Dr. Pandey. So tofu eating is good for healthy living, right? Uh, yeah. How much tofu per meal and how many meals per week would you suggest? Uh, I know oh, actually, it may not be a, uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think that's a good question, but I think uh, I didn't check that uh, the, the consumption amount because I just collected the sample and check the activities. I, I think the tofu doesn't have any, uh, you know, like uh, toxicity, I, I, as far as I know, uh, because it's just, just a soy food, so it, it doesn't have much toxicity. But I think uh, we need to do a little bit of more work on the quantification of these phenolic and flavonoid compound, proper identification and the uh, proper quantification because there are diverse uh, phenolic and flavonoid molecules. Although I identify genistein and diazin, but we still need to quantify what amount of diazin and genistein and other possible flavonoids are present. And also, I'm not sure, but toxicity test, but I, I doubt that uh, flavonoids, this tofu is less toxic, but uh, you know, to 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 answer properly your questions, I think we should uh, do a little bit of more, um, yeah. you know, this, uh, experimental work like uh, you know giving this tofu extract to the to the human and then analyzing these, uh, you know, the urine yeah. sample probably for the metabolism, right? How they consume and what is the benefits uh, in the human? But that was uh, not the scope of. Yes, uh, yeah. that's true. Thank you. Um, but uh, Dr. Bishnu, uh, you were uh, saying, and we all know, uh, uh, soybean has uh, a very high flavonoid uh, content, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir. But uh, do you have some good comparison with similar uh, high uh, or flavonoid uh, source of uh, products? Maybe um, yeah, soy has high, but compared to what products? Is, are, are there any other products which are yeah, higher I'd... than soybeans? Yeah, I tried to find out the other soy product in the market. I think the tofu was was uh, widely used there. Uh, I know in in other like uh, in, in Korea and Japan, people used to consume a lot of soy uh, food, similar kind of tofu mm. kind of food also. So I think it would be interesting if we can compare, uh, you know, some of these other soy product available in the market. Uh, yes. I heard that the somehow the Dharan area they had uh, some similar kind of tofu kind of food, but um, I didn't you know, find that in the Kathmandu market and uh, couldn't access that. Yes, I think that would be interesting if we can compare. With and uh, yeah, yes, even within the tofu itself, uh, yeah. there are firm tofu, there are soft tofu, there are yes. medium firmness. Yeah. I think the, the difference comes from 
the pH at which uh, the yes. soy milk is precipitated into protein, which is tofu basically. So what I'm trying to say here is yeah. the flavonoid content might also be a function of uh, these, uh, at least pH uh, of the pro, uh, precipitation conditions. So yeah. it might be a really good thing to have someone check, you know, like a variety, a different type of processing conditions, how they may impact uh, yeah. the flavonoid exactly. content. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, exactly. I think I will, I will continue uh, because I'm also interested in this flavonoid and phenolic molecule from the soy products. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue okay. that work in future as well. Uh, let's see. I mean, uh, maybe uh, we can get some good insight into the soy product. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pandey, for wonderful work there. And uh, again, I would like to uh, congratulate and thank, uh, convey my sincere thanks to all of the presenters, uh, which are now invited to this plenary discussion um, about uh, your research, or if you yourself have any questions to other presenters, please feel free. Now, next uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, is the time for plenary discussion. Uh, about the research itself, about the RCBC, the uh, um, committee and its uh, scope and work, and or the NAPA itself. Okay, so if you have questions, uh, uh, anything about us, about the research, please go ahead. Next 10 minutes, 12 minutes or so, it's a plenary discussion now. It's open. Thank you. Since nobody is asking, I'll ask one question to Arati Joshi. Please, go ahead. How do you know when the colocasias are ready to harvest? Is that colocasia project? I think I forgot which. Hello, Arati Ji, are you around? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Did According you hear the question? The... Did you hear the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, when, do I, to... when do I harvest my colocasia? Yes, sir. According to the literature, the literature said uh, in the nine month of, of planting the colocasia are ready to harvest. Thank you. There was uh, one question <laughs> Arati, um, actually in the chat. Uh, have you oh. read um, different maturity dates for different uh, colocasia varieties because they mature different timing? Are you recording yes, those sir. differences? Yes, sir. Different maturity date also. So, I am the thin mina bio field mazana pako, the thin mina the hiko data cham lina paxenum, abogoko bela mace, boko zati data root, no zati mina zati data lina post Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Please. Yeah. I just missed a few ginger marishas. I like the research very good. I will name this. Please, a few more. Question Chemera ginger marishas. Gonna be like director. I listen to Amro Nepalma, especially mobilizing the red check bass. Telegoga here is a product of Ruth Padan. So, the market. Kathibe was Samas and buy about a product. Later on, a bunch of books. I know the old Thomas and Bernie Paul or a son of practice, a Puran practice. practice of a particular pass of Hasena. Kissa, Advisor Cotical Eleven, Satio, Ginger Lagat, or name product or go say marketing like local marketing or international countrywide marketing like it's an Advisor for eleven Cotical Dexter. Advisor at Bazar Market or Unjani weekly, uh, Itavari oh, Hat, oh. Sukravari Hat, one is good concept to know Unazan Super, two case matching, Toro, the market summoned the Hana, Kosu, village, a remote area, Maboso near Ruina, and our producer, the Poily Bunny, a kid trader or some Poily Kurabo is a gown, the race, I know, and you know, this is not like there. And you trader to trader or so or put a wholesaler, some poly contract boys, okay? Any any the price not pound a producer or late time, I know. Any plus our first of all, my or some of the two, any don't give any honor, is a cotty producer or late to how mother just to my or good puny trader, my little idiama, choose the room, some of my car or whatever, donkey on it is automatic. I know 
ब्रांडिंग सपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट फैसिलिटेशन में सपोर्ट कर दोसोकिंग पेदिने स्मल होल्डर फार्मिंग उन्नी जिम्मा होने एक ठाक जिम्मा भर नेपालगंज ले जाने अथवा और ठाव में बिक्री करने चलन से हो रही मोर चाह अगि बैनी भन्न जो करें इन नेटवर्किंग भन अथवा भरी सदैस सीडिकेट प्रथा प्रणाली जस्त क्या नया आना गाड़ो नया भि पसना गाड़ो ते भर मैं अगि कोपरेटिव को कोई रखे कोपरेटिव कोपरेटिव थ्रू जान सको मोर इफेक्टिव हो भाई किसिम राखन खोजे हो तो पक्क जो लगे इट्स नट दैट इजी रही स्मल स्किल में धर पेदी नई प्रडक्शन होने हो रहा कैस क्रपक रूप में प्रडक्शन हो तर मार्केटिंग को लगी अर अज्ञान राम खाल मार्केटिंग चैनल राम डेवलप भक्त जो लगे रोचे तो शायद मैं जहांसम लगे सलैन जिला को अदुआ मत हे कि हर एक कैस क्रप कर अरुण भेजिटेबल में समस्या जो मैं लगता है पैले देखि नहीं पैले देखि नहीं हम कस्तो हम नेटिव प्क्टिस एकदम राम प्क्टिस क्या जो अभी वर्ल्ड ने नहीं एडप्ट करें जो यहाँ कम्युनिटी सपोर्टेड एग्रिकल्चर भर यूरोप में यूएस में एकदम प्रमोट कर स्मल फार्मर तर हमी से बाहर के मोडल अलग कमर्सि मोडल अडीज कैपिटलिस्टिक मोडल एडप्ट करें अभी हम नेटिव मोडल जो जो राम काम कर इंटरेस्टिंग फलोअप कुने कई ठाव में अदुआ को कलेक्शन सेंटर अथवा कम्युनिटी कलेक्शन सेंटर तेरी मार्केटिंग अलग इफिशियन जस्तु देखिए तर ते सलैन में कई थी एक्सपीरियंस कम्युनिटी कलेक्शन सेंटर मैं रिसर्च कर एरिया में तो सर मैं भेट उ इंडिविजुअल ट्रेडर पैल्य कंटैक्ट में आने असरी पैला नहीं भर उ सप्लाई देखे सर मैं कपरेटिव एवं दुईटा मत पाए तर तुम प्राइस जो भाला ट्रेडर ने पाई रह मिडल मैन को प्ले कर उ प्रफिट जी उ नहीं राखे पाए कि मैं तो कपरेटिव भर भी मैं तो एसेंस नहीं देखी बुद्धि सर मैं 
Aditya Bhai, are, do you still have questions? Oh, no, have... go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it is almost 11.33 EST and 10.33 uh, CST. So, shall we uh, move to another? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very nice, uh, vigorous discussion. If we <clears throat> do not have more questions, comments, suggestions, yeah, we can uh, move to next phase of the program. Uh, next phase, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Lila Karki sir, pahila jaldi yeh program ugarnu ba. Excuse me. Ah, wala pani aalik the time diyo. Tis pesi hamro EIF bade koi faculty unansa yeh wala ki time diyo. Thro Mix sir also has some thing to share with us. Uh, yeah. Yes. You, uh, can, we can... you can give me a couple three minutes toward the end. Thank you. All right. We'll start with uh, uh, some. Faculty advisor, uh, preferably we had uh, Dr. Arjun Sresta's name from AFU. Uh, I may not have seen him in the list, uh, but uh, Dr. Vishnu Adhikari, sir, uh, can talk on his behalf or on, on AFU behalf. Um, Dr. Adhikari. Uh, uh, let's uh, check if Arjun sir is available in any name. Arjun sir is there? I did not see in the list, but anyway. Uh, maybe just like iPhone or something, that's why just to make sure. I see. You... Yeah, that's very good point. Dr. Adhikari, Arjun Adhikari. So no, sorry, Arjun, Arjun stress time, sorry. Dr. Arjun Sresta. Uh, no, okay, okay, then yeah, we can. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Vishnu Adhikari, sir. I think he's also not in. Yes. He was, uh, I saw him, but he was muted. Okay, he's up now. Dr. Adhikari, sir. Yes, please. Uh, please, uh, <clears throat> on the behalf of uh, NAPA advisors um, and, and your experience uh, in guiding the research, uh, uh, students' research through this uh, mini grant program, would you like to uh, say a few words? Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, respect. Uh, uh, President Dr. Meghnath Parajulista and his whole team of NAPA. Yeah, this is this is a NAPA mini grant research presentation program of uh, second half. NAPA sponsored uh, migrant presentation program. From your small support, number of uh, number of our students of different institutions uh, under different universities are getting benefits uh, from the uh, from the small napa fund especially in our uh, in our case uh, most of our undergraduate students uh, they, are, they are doing the undergraduate practicum assessment uh, in our system, especially in under TU, uh, and in uh, uh, in addition to undergraduate, our um, uh, graduate students in my master of science in different disciplines were also involved uh, in research activities in different commodities in different places. Uh, they, they are undergraduate as well as graduate students are able to conduct the research in different places, in different communities, and they are able to, uh, to take data, tabulation of data, analysis of data, presentation of research, review of literature, and at the last, uh, publication of research articles uh, in different rebooted uh, journals. Uh, it is uh, academically great achievement to the students and different institutions too. 
from uh, from this small efforts number of students are in uh, are interested nowadays to join, uh, to join with napa and get uh, small funds for their research and development activities and and their uh, exposure this type of activities will help to increase the academic standard of the students and they are also getting the exposure from this type of activities in addition to these support napa also interested in to support uh, us uh, about online teaching uh, in different institutions conduction of the training programs exposure visit uh, to the faculties uh, as well as students research as well as development activities with different different campus under different universities um, we uh, we have already discussed uh, about these different uh, different uh, activities on the day before yesterday uh, a class but not least i would like uh, like to uh, to give thanks thanks uh, for the president as well as all all the authorities and the members uh, of napa napa Uh, for your positive collaboration and support uh, for for us especially uh, we are uh, we are from the different agricultural institutions really this type of uh, support uh, would be useful useful uh, to increase the uh, uh, to increase the uh, productivity per unit time uh, in different aspect uh, different uh, crop as well as uh, livestock and other uh, other agricultural commodities thank you very much um, for your for, uh, for uh, different type of uh, this this type of activities and support and collaborative actions thank you very much yeah thank you thank you dr radhikari uh, for your wonderful <clears throat> uh, suggestions here um, and and as you uh, realize uh, this has been napas and rcbc's very first effort and then uh, and we got a lot of help and support from uh, AFU and IAS and other institutes uh, to to enhance the impact of such activities uh, on the students as well as faculty interaction so we hope to continue that collaboration in the future so um <clears throat> along the same lines i i now would like to invite uh, dr lila karki uh, who uh, was the past president um, of uh, napa and who was uh, as i mentioned yesterday very instrumental in in uh, collecting the funds uh, for this rcbc research so dr lila karki sir would you please uh, uh, say a few words on on behalf of your uh, erstwhile um, executive uh, on your efforts in in getting this rcbc mini grant going and hopefully we would like to continue in the future as well but dr lila karki sir <clears throat> Hello, Dr. Karki. Uh, I see you are in there. Is he uh, muted? Mm, you can in invite Meg sir in the meantime. Yeah. Uh, if not, yeah. then Meg sir has been the integral part of uh, previous. Uh, Hello. Um, oh yes, sir. Yeah. Is that Dr. Karki? Do you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, we'd like to hear from you on 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 your efforts uh, in getting this mini grant going, uh, uh, and and any suggestions you have for the future, Dr. Karthik. Uh, sure. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Dr. Lamsal and uh, team. Uh, Sunita, how was? Sunita, no, ma'am. Okay. Good. Uh, Ma, then your prior commitment uh, with another assignment. Tell me, God, the manga. Is it funny? Or by the way, as a funny God, by the way, by the way, my dear, I thoroughly enjoyed the whole presentation over the phone. Ma, like, I'm so happy that you have made interactive uh, communication. Ma, boss, Mr. King, and you, God, by the way, who currently, 
तर मैं ये यो इंपोर्टेंट सेंसन लिस् चाहना रोक एसाइनमेंट बट एक बाहर छु थैंक यू सो मच फर द अपर्चुनिटी अगेन यहाँ आज को लाइन में उपस्थित होने संपूर्ण डिस्टिंग्विश पार्टिशिपेन्ट्स सब हार्दिक नमस्कार मैं अलग ये क रिथल कर मन लगे ये मई लाइफ अंडर ग्रेजुएट लाइफ इन आई डबल एस नाइन्टीन एटी फोर को कुरा हो मामपुर निस्कृत तेरा भर्खर एट कंप्यूटर पुग्या म्यूसिया ने देखे भन्थे तो कंप्यूटर से प्रधान प्रसाद शर्मा भर सर हो अरु को जुरिज दीक्षण में थे अभी वहाँ हमें देखा हुए कि हम ग्रुप लाई बड़ी में पांच मिनट थे एवं ग्रुप में हम चालीस पचास जान कति थी अभी तो लाइब्रेरी में मत राखे अभी हो कंप्यूटर को अभी अब वहाँ के भू ते अब भाषा बुझे है अब कंप्यूटर को भाषा तर तेरे देखने मौका पा अब मैं तेल क्या को टाइम है अब अलग को अंडर ग्रेजुएट को भाई बहनी जो यहाँ प्रस्तुत कर हिजो आज फैबुलस एक्स्ट्रा अर्डिनरी प्रेजेंटेशन दैट इज अ भेरी आई मीन बिग जेनेरेशन गैप अब इन टर्म्स अफ उमेर में अब हम धे अगड़ी को भूं तर अ टेक्नोलॉजी नलेज आदि इत्यादि को बारे में अलग को जेनेरेशन इज सुपर सुपर फास्ट अब यो अंडर ग्रेजुएट को रही ग्रेजुएट को जो स्टूडेंट अनुसंधान को नतीजा प्रस्तुत करो नतीजा मन लगे कि कुछ कन्फरेंस को कुछ प्रोफेसनल ने प्रेजेंट कर कम थे जो लगता सन्दर्भ में सब सब हम नापा रिसर्च मिनी ग्रांस को अवार्ड इज एकदम धीरे धीरे धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ रंग्रेचुलेसन तो रिसर्च फंड प्राप्त कर सफल हो संगसंग अब तो प्रस्तुति करने दिन में आईपुग्खे सहयोग करने नापा को एडवाइजर साथी जो जल रियल एडवाइज कर एडवाइज कर सहयोग रोकल एडवाइजर मैं सब को नाम नभन अब समय धेरे छेन वहाँ सब मदम धीरे धीरे धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ क्यों वहाँ पर्सनल टाइम फैमिली को टाइम आपको प्रोफेसनल टाइम बाट टाइम कटाए योग कार्य हमी नापाला सहयोग एकदम प्रशंसनीय अब मैं अलग कुरा के कर लगता मैं कई साथी धन्यवाद दिखा क्योंकि हमें साढ़े चार वर्ष अगड़ी परिकल्पना एटा प्रोफेसनल सोसाइटी को जो जन्म भो तो जन्म करने क्रम में हमी कमिटी निर्माण ग्यौं तो कमिटी देखि आजसम आईपुग्खे करीब करीब साढ़े चार वर्ष को यात्रा पूरा करें मैं रसंग पेलो दिन देखि अम काम करने साथी अलग को कमिटी में नहीं हो वहाँ सब एकदम हार्दिक धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ आई एम द आई वॉज द प्राउड प्रेसिडेन्ट सुरू को एसोसिएसन निर्माण करने सन्दर्भ को कमिटी को कोडिनेटर भी होने मौका मिलो ते पच्चीस को फाउंडिंग प्रेसिडेन्ट ते पच्चीस साथी विश्वास कर फिर सेकेंड राउंड को प्रेसिडेन्ट होने मौका पाए रो यात्रा को दौरान में एट टीम प्लेयर को हिसाब से एटा वर्ल्ड विश को हिसाब से डिरेक्टली इनडिरेक्टली सहयोग करने संपूर्ण साथी संपूर्ण वर्ल्ड विशर्स नापर प्रेमी सदस्य जीवर सब एकदम हार्दिक धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ यो यो यह हम कलेक्टिव इफोर्ट हो कलेक्टिव प्राइड हो रहा आज हमें जिस नापा में यो भर्चुअल कन्फरेंस कर उपलब्धि हासिल कर कलेक्टिव उपलब्धि हो रहा इसमें हम सब सेलिब्रेट कर एवरी वन सुड बी भेरी प्राउड अफ दिस एकमिशमेंट अब मैं कुछ अलग स्ट्रीमलाइन करते जाना खेल हिजो डॉक्टर लमसाल ने वहाँ को ओपनिंग रिमाक्स में भन्न दुईटा कुरा को सरो फेरो में मलिक इलाबोरेट कर चाहूँ अ 
and uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, compliment dr lamsal tapai le bhannu bhayo thyo aba yo हमें एवं कुरो अब यह कन्फरेंस में हम प्रेजेंटेशन करने हम रिसर्च फाइंडिंग्स को भाई हम अवधारणा थी अब यह कोरोना को कारण हम सब मौका वंचित भू अदरवाइज हमें यह आज को प्रस्तुति कई महीना अगड़ी नहीं सकता हो तर थैंक्स एवरी वन थैंक्स फर अर्गनाइजिंग दिस एक्सलेंट सिंपोसिम हम दिवस अलग ढिलाई भाई हम प्रस्तुति एकदम एक्सलेन भाग पेलो कुछ भो प्रस्तुति को अब दोसों कुरो वहाँ भैं मैं यदि इफ आई एम नट मिस्टेकन वहाँ भैंथ कि डलर डलर जमा करने काम सजी थे तर वहाँ एकदम प्रयास कर I really appreciate your compliment. So you, as I already mentioned, you the Amru Shah is a collective uh, effort, oh, you know, collective accomplishment. Oh, uh, I was one who uh, got the opportunity to lead the team. To your da alag kurao, tarad this is all our uh, team spirit, team accomplishment. But you, Sandrao, say RC BC, when you handle just like. रिसोर्स एंड कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग कमिटी इसको लीड कर डॉक्टर लमसाल ने आई थैंक यू वेरी मच फर योर एक्सलेंट कोअपरेशन कोअर्डिनेसन एंड डिवोसन अफ योर वेरी प्रिशियस टाइम अस्ते अर कमिटीज को साथी अब लीला खत्तीवड़ा मनोज कार्की रामजी घिमिरे आदित्य खनाल सुरेन्द्र केसी सब विशेष धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ ते पच्चीस अर्क धन्यवाद नदी न होने साथी हो हम डॉक्टर प्रेम भंडारी वहाँ ले यो रिसर्च कंसेप्ट को अवधारणा बीजारोपण करने ऊर्जा दिने काम में वहाँ धेरे नहीं सहयोग सो आई रियली एक्नोलेज हिज कंट्रिब्यूशन अब यो यह हमी आज अब कस्तो फैंटास्टिक भो सुखे अब सब साथी को प्रेजेंटेशन तर यह यहाँसम आईपुग्खे हमें यात्रा चाहिए अन्यथा अर्थ नलागोस् कि पैला पृथ्वीनारायण शाह ने जो ये सानों दुख ने आर्जे को मूलुक होना सब में चेतन भाया भाजे हो हमें इसमें थुप्रे 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 लगानी करुप्रे टाइम रखा छो मनिटरी कंट्रीब्यूशन भी करो मच एफोर्ट सो मच टाइम सो मच डेडिकेसन सो मच विल पावर सो मच कमिटमेंट एवरीथिंग सब ये कुछ एक ठाव में राख्ता खेल हम आज को यह अवस्था में आईपुग सफल भूं यह हम संपूर्ण यो एग्रीकल्चर एंड अलाइड डिस्प्लिन जो जो नापा में हम आबद्ध छो सब सेलिब्रेट कर आई वंस एगेन इम्फोसाइज दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट अब यह फंड जेनेरेशन करने सन्दर्भ में अब तीत सजी छेन ये अमेरिका में बाहर बट हेद्दे साथी भलर तलब खा ये दुई हजार डलर इसो अमेरिका में बसर फुर्ती फाती इन सोचाई भी है अब थुप्रे कि टीका टिप्पणी भी सुनी अब तो आपने ठाव सदैं आई डोट वॉन्ट टू गो बैक तर ते सजिलो है हमीर साथी अब सयों इमेल लेख्य सयों घंटा हमें इसमें फोन को कम्युनिकेशन बाटो रिच आउट गये मोनिटरी कलेक्शन को लगी आई डॉक्टर लमसार मेन्सन ये सब नापा को मेम्बर्स कंट्रीब्यूशन हो रहा हमें साथी रिक्वेस्ट के गये एक कप कफी तो छाट दिन प्लिज एक कप कफी डोनेसन कर हप्ता को दैट इज इक्वल टू अब तो विभिन्न पसा में तेज को दर फरक भाव्यतया दुई डलर को हिसाब कर हप्ता को दुई डलर वर्ष को बाउन्न हप्ता को एक सौ डलर हो एक सौ डलर से कंती में डोनेसन करूँ कृषि अनुसंधान को काम हमें मात्र ह्यूमन क्लिनिक सेवा कर सकता वाली हम थोपे साथी रिक्वेस्ट गये तब एक कप टी डोनेसन कर एक कप अर्थ कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स सैक्रिफाइस कर एकचोटी एट मूवी हेने महीना को सैक्रिफाइस कर अथवा डाइनिंग आउट घटाई दिन हमें रिक्वेस्ट करते जाना खेल धेरे साथी ज जिस विश्वास कर डोनेसन कर अभी हमें यह मोडालिटी अब पेलपटक बना तीन साहो हमी वी वर नट वेरी स्योर हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू लैंड 
अनि हामीले चाहिँ यसमा दुईटा कन्सेप्ट ल्याएका थियौँ एउटा चाहिँ एक सय डलरको एउटा दुई सय डलरको अनि यो जसले एक सय र दुई सय डलर डोनेसन गर्नुहुन्छ उहाँहरू चाहिँ यसको स्पोन्सर हुने रिसर्चको स्पोन्सर हुने अनि एडभाइजर हुने भन्ने हाम्रो त्यो अवधारणा अगाडि सार्यौँ र त्योभन्दा तल जति पनि साथीहरूले पाँच डलर दस डलर बिस पचास दिनुहुन्छ त्यो चाहिँ हामीले डोनेसनको रूपमा पुल फन्डमा जम्मा गर्ने एउटा चाहिँ के भन्छ मोडालिटीको अवधारणा बनाएर अगाडि सार्यौँ अब यो फन्ड चाहिँ यहाँको साथीहरूले मात्रै होइन नेपालको साथीहरूले पनि डोनेसन गर्नुभएको छ जस्तो म भन्छु किरण ओझा हुनुहुन्छ एकजना त्यसपछि निलहरी न्यौपाने उहाँहरूले नेपालमै बसेर पनि डोनेसन गर्नुभएको छ उहाँहरूको लिस्ट चाहिँ मैले यहाँहरूलाई सुनाइन भने त्यो यो सम्पूर्ण कार्यक्रम चाहिँ अधुरो हुन जान्छ आई विल रिड द नेम्स इन फ्यू सेकेन्ड्स र त्यस पछाडि हामीले चाहिँ अब धेरै पैसा उठाउन सकिँदैन यो सुरु सुरुको अवस्थाको अर्गनाइजेसन भएको हुनाले चाहिँ अब के गर्ने भन्दा ए मेम्बर कन्ट्रिब्युसनबाट चाहिँ कोलाबोरेटिभ रिसर्च अगाडि सार्ने भनेर चाहिँ अगाडि सार्यौँ त्यसपछि हामीले नेपालमा हामीसँग क्लोजली फङ्सन गर्ने एग्रिकल्चर एन्ड रिलेटेड इन्स्टिट्युसन्सको साथीहरूलाई सल्लाह माग्यौँ हाम्रो चाहिँ यस्तो यस्तो सोचाइ छ तपाईँहरूले कसरी सहयोग गर्न सक्नुहुन्छ भन्दाखेरि अब धेरै साथीहरूले भन्नुभयो वान हन्ड्रेड थाउजेन्ड भन्दा तलको रिसर्चको कन्सेप्टै अगाडि नसार्नुहोस् द्याट इज नट गोइङ टु ह्यापेन इन नेपाल त्यसपछि हामीहरू केही अचम्म डिसएपोइन्ट डिसएपोइन्टेड अथवा डिस्करेज पनि भयौँ तर वी आर डिडन गिभ अप वी केप्ट अन ट्राइङ एन्ड ट्राइङ एन्ड ट्राइङ एन्ड फाइनली हामीले चाहिँ करिब करिब तिन लाख नब्बे हजार आठ सय पैँसट्ठी इफ आई एम नट मिस्टेकन यति रुपियाँ चाहिँ हामीले जम्मा गर्न सफल भयौँ र त्यसको बावजुद चाहिँ आज साथीहरूले भाइ बहिनीहरूले जुन पन्ध्रवटा कार्यपत्रहरू अनुसन्धानको प्रस्तुत गर्नुभयो एक्सपेन्ट यो यति मनिटरी कन्ट्रिब्युसनबाट यति ठुलो उपलब्धि हुन्छ भनेर हामीले पनि त्यतिखेर सायद परिकल्पना गरेका थिएनौँ उहाँलाई यो लेभलमा विच इज भेरी 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 आउट स्ट्यान्डिङ अब हामीले चाहिँ त्यही फन्डको अवधारणामा आई मिन त्यो बजेट कन्सिस्टेन्ट भित्र रहेर एउटा रिसर्चलाई तिस हजार दिउँ गर्दै हामी यहाँसम्म आइपुग्यौँ अब यो डोनेसन गर्ने क्रममा चाहिँ अब त्यो सयभन्दा तलको चाहिँ मैले यहाँ नाम भनिन थुप्रै हुनुहुन्छ साथीहरू होइन तर त सय रुपियाँ र माथि डोनेसन गर्ने साथीहरू जसले रिसर्चको लागि स्पोन्सर गर्नु हो आफ्नो भाग काटेर चिया कफी जे जे हुन्छ आफ्नो आफ्नो ठाउँबाट काटेर उहाँहरूलाई वी सुड रियली रिकग्नाइज देम रमेश चन्द्र खनाल दस हजार मैले नेपाली रुपियाँ भने भन्दैछु केमिका भण्डारी दस हजार पाँच सय किरण ओझा दस हजार नेपालबाट निलरी नेपाने दस हजार नेपालबाटै नेपालबाट आई मिन वी आर ओरिजिनली फ्रम नेपाल बट उहाँहरू अहिले पनि वहीँ हुनुहुन्छ आई मिन प्रेम भण्डारी उषा भण्डारी तिस हजार प्रदीप वर्गले मनिका घिमिरे तिस हजार मनोज कार्की दस हजार बुद्धि लमसाल दस हजार राम आचार्य दस हजार अनि बुद्धि लमसालको म्याडमले पनि पाँच हजार डोनेसन गर्नुभएको छ राजन घिमिरे दस हजार राम आचार्य दस हजार मेघनाथ पराजुली एवं शर्मिला पराजुली तिस हजार मुक्ति घिमिरे दस हजार अनन्त आचार्य दस हजार भरत पोखरेल दस हजार प्रकाश मल्ल दस हजार गान्धी भट्टराई दस हजार लीला कार्की र उमा कार्की चालिस हजार गरेर हामीले दुई लाख साठी हजार पाँच सय रुपियाँ चाहिँ यो स्पोन्सर ग्रान्ड भनेर कलेक्सन गऱ्यौँ र बाँकी चाहिँ त्यो पुलमा आएको अरू रकम थपेर चाहिँ यो टोटल रिसर्चलाई स्पोन्सर गर्न सक्यौँ द्याट वाज भेरी ग्रेट एन्ड आई रियली रियली एप्रिसिएट दिस जेनरेसन जेनरस डोनेसन्स बाई दिज इन्डिभिजुअल्स उहाँहरूले यदि यो डोनेसन गरिनु भएको थिएन भने सायद यो आज हामी यसरी यत्रो ठुलो उपलब्धि पनि गर्न सक्दैन थियौँ होला त्यसले गर्दाखेरि मैले एउटा जुन साथीहरूलाई एउटा मेरो लिडरसिपमा चाहिँ हामीले अनुरोध गऱ्यौँ उहाँहरूले हाम्रो अनुरोधलाई चाहिँ स्वीकार गरेर हरेक क्षेत्रबाट मनिटरी कन्ट्रिब्युसन टाइम कन्ट्रि कन्ट्रिब्युसन लगायतको जति पनि कन्ट्रिब्युसन गर्नुभयो उहाँहरू सबैलाई म फेरि पनि एकचोटि धेरै धेरै धन्यवाद दिन चाहन्छु र अब यो सुरु सुरुमा चाहिँ अलिकति बाटो निर्माण गर्न अथवा घरको जग हाल्न अलिक गाह्रो हुन्छ विभिन्न कारणहरूले गर्दाखेरि तर अब यो जग हाल्ने र बाटो निर्माण गर्ने काम सुरु भइसकेपछि अबको कमिटीहरूले डेफिनेटली हामी डे वनदेखि काम गर्ने साथीहरू हुनुहुन्छ अहिले नयाँ कमिटीमा उहाँहरूले चाहिँ यसलाई अझ विस्तार र विकास गर्दै लानुहुन्छ र यो चाहिँ एउटा नापाको 
ब्याक होममा अथवा मात्र यु नो सेवा गर्ने एकदमै महत्त्वपूर्ण एक्टिभिटी हो भन्ने मलाई लाग्दछ र इट विल मुभ फरवर्ड विथ दिस आई वुड लाइक टु थ्याङ्क्स थ्याङ्क वन्स एगेन डाक्टर लम्सल एन्ड अल अर्गनाइजिङ टिम फर द अपर्चुनिटी थ्याङ्क यु Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Leela Karki, sir, for your excellent leadership, uh, not only for this uh, NAPA, but uh, also showing the way to RCBC committee. And again, we, the committee uh, really appreciates uh, your effort in having the uh, dollar amounts collected as well as uh, for each and every suggestions you had uh, all, all along the way. Thank you again. Thank you so much. And we believe your uh, participation, your uh, um, leadership, uh, your guidance will continue in the days to come. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Mega Parajuli, the current uh, NAPA president, uh, to, to give his uh, few words about the program, about uh, RCBCs and uh, its uh, potential activities in the future uh, mini grants and some other collaboration opportunities uh, uh, this current ec uh, pursues uh, who is planning to pursue okay so please uh, dr mega parajali thank you dr lamsal uh, for a few minutes here uh, and i know it's uh, already late uh, in nepal rami uh, apani of a sunday morning uh, uh, we have uh, invested quite a bit of time so i'll try to be uh, short uh amra ek jana mitra hobai ma i think tyan bujhalo pani hunu lai hola i think the point being uh, uh, we are in we are from all over the world and uh, it's uh, i congratulate everybody and i thank everybody to give their valuable uh, weekend time to make it uh, uh, make it possible before i uh, give my very very short presentation uh, uh, remarks uh, i like to uh, uh, copy dr kargilio ajun one bhako copy gar i'll paste on my presentation first because uh, uh, those are the things he uh, he not only provided uh, uh, able leadership as a founding president uh, of this organization i was one of the few people uh, that he referred to uh, that uh, we started the journey together uh, there are several in this audience today but i was one of them and uh, uh, it is just a remarkable opportunity for me to uh, follow dr karki's leadership uh, it is uh, a tough job to uh, uh, follow him for sure but uh, we will continue to seek guidance from him and uh, uh, i uh, i thank uh, 2018 2020 napa executive committee uh, under dr karki's leadership who uh, <coughs> conceived and executed this uh, uh, rcbc program mini research grant program that we we we, we heard from dr karki himself uh without uh, going in greater detail i'll just say that uh, uh we we had no no design in our mind or we had no expectation how it will turn out ra aaja hijo ra aaja ko presentation haru hami aafai le witness garna paunda kheri ra uh, uh i am the 1979 isc product of uh, pakliwa campus myself र डाक्टर कार्गिले पनि भन्नुभयो आफ्नो अनुभव र मैले चाहिँ नि नेपालमा आइएसी गरेँ पछि बाहिर पढ्न गएँ म र त्यहाँको मैले पढ्दाखेरिको क्वालिटी र त्यो रिसर्च भन्ने जब हामीलाई त्यो अन्डर ग्रेजुएटमा पनि रिसर्च हो नि अलिअलि प्र्याक्टिकल ट्रेनिङ टाइपको एउटा के हुन्थ्यो कारण हामी पनि बिर्सिसक्यो भने अहिले आएर एउटा चाहिँ नि हाई क्लास जुन रिसर्चको प्रेजेन्टेसन हामीले देखियो all kinds of statistical analysis molecular the, you know research and so forth this is incredible opportunity for all of us so we must congratulate uh, uh, these uh, young uh, uh, young researchers and i will uh, uh, i'll also thank napa rcbc committee members uh, led by dr buddhilam sal uh, they uh, 
they did really awesome job uh, and again much is said already on this the research advisors both local advisors and advisors from napa i think uh, student le jun research gare athwa aru scientist haru le jun research garnu bho yi sabai lai jun euta advisory role le uh, ho of course slide banaun lai athwa jan data collection garnu lai ek tarfa ko madad bho but i think bigger picture here is the network now Uh, young students are networked with uh, folks like us uh, who are toward the end of our uh, career here and in between all napa membership so i think that certainly will uh, uh, will create a tremendous opportunity for these young scientists i think that is another solid achievement that i see uh, through this rcbc program sponsors dr karkli bhani saknu bho त्यसमा म अलिकति 1 मिनेटहरु लिन चाहन्छु उहाँले भन्नुभयो कि अ 1 कप कफी अ अथवा ड्रिंक्स वन्स अ वीक अ 2 डलर सस्तो कफी खाए पनि 1 डलर त पर्छ 50 बाउन्न रुपैयाँ त भयो त्यसो भएर चाहिँ कन्टिन्युइङ अन डाक्टर कार्कीज विजडम एन्ड लीडरशिप दैट the results we saw yesterday and today i cannot imagine that anybody would like not to continue this therefore through this forum uh next uh, two years from now i want to have the sponsors list longer than what dr karki presented this morning that is my request to all of you who are in audience and beyond uh, we will be sending uh, uh, email requesting begging pleading doing everything to uh, to collect some funds to continue to uh, walk on the journey of this success that uh, we saw yesterday and uh, today there is nothing napa could have invested on any better uh, productive work than what we saw yesterday and today so uh, we will be we will be seeking donation uh, uh, for uh, Uh, for the investment of uh, future okay a uh, couple of things uh, uh okay and i'm also uh, many of you know but some of you do not know that um, napa has a professional uh, journal refereed journal called uh, global journal of agriculture and applied sciences gjs and uh, uh, when i went through these uh, 15 presentations uh, yes uh, some of the uh, research uh, lacked uh, multi location or multi year data because funding was itself for one year but uh, there is no reason to believe that uh, most of these research uh, would be uh, developed into refereed publications and i urge their advisors to help their students reanalysis of data and uh, see if uh, you could uh, uh, build them into public public uh, uh, publication quality uh, drafts hamro gjs ko uddeshya pani ke thyo bhane hamro jun लेस प्रिविलेज्ड कम्युनिटी सब पब्लिकेशन में जिस को रिच चाइना इंटरनेशनल अथवा ग्लोबल टाइप का जनरल हो रहा है तो इसको लाइक यहाँ में नापाले आप हैं ले वड़ा जैसे बेनु प्रोवाइड करों बनी उद्देश्य ले शुरू करिए को तो इट डजन्ट मीन दैट वी पब्लिश एनीथिंग एंड एवरीथिंग इट इज वी वी एक्सपेक्ट � the good news is we have lots of members in uh, napa that they are willing to help your presentations help your research to bring it up to the speed and bring it up to the quality to publish so i urge everybody to uh, uh, consider your research and maybe even in some cases go ahead and generate second year of data if needed and uh, we want to uh, we want to conserve our publication here okay uh those are the few remarks uh, we can go on and on it's a late night in nepal already uh, 
um, I would just say that uh, on behalf of entire uh, NAPA membership, uh, as uh, uh, current leader of NAPA Executive Committee, I um, I want to promise to uh, to this community or uh, to to the attendees today that uh, we will do everything possible to continue this program. I don't know what the modality will be. I don't know how much money we can generate how many proposals we can fund, but we will continue this project. That will be my solemn promise. And for this, I seek everybody's uh, help and assistance and guidance. And uh, here, uh, thanking ICBC committee for uh, providing me a few, uh, uh, few minutes to uh, express my remarks. With that, thank you very much. And congratulations again, all the researchers. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mega Parajali, sir, uh, for your uh, wonderful comments. Um, I'm, you know, um, I'm really uh, assured very well that uh, the program, this RCBCs uh, or mini grants or some other programs will continue under your leadership. And we have already some uh, uh, offer of sponsorship for the future research already in some of the uh, contacts, communications I had. So definitely uh, there is an interest uh, to, to have it continue. So please uh, um, continue to do so. Thank you very much. So now I, I will invite Dr. Ramji Gimireji um, uh, to sort of wrap up the sessions as well as uh, say a few words. Uh, uh, Dr. Ramji Gimire, he is uh, the co-host of this particular session and the current general secretary of NAPA. Dr. Gimire, sir. Uh, thank you, Lamsal sir. Thank you, Mek sir, uh, Karki sir, and everybody. Matsutkari ma ugarsu dilo bani baise gaya sir. Tesko lagi ma chama maakso, ami chama maakso. Par kya ek raayaru vanne parni baakule. Yesto forum paide na ferry bani abe bhirna gaayaru ansa vanne le amle yo forum la utilize karna khoji. Ali kiti samay badi gaye. Tesko lagi chama chance puna. Par yo aile ko yo review conference ma aunok lagi help karne amro RCBC team ka saathi aru. Executive Committee का साथ ही और और एडवाइजर प्रेजेंटर और सब पे लाइस हैं यहाँ लाइक बधाई धन्यवाद दिन अचान सु मेरे पर्सनल तरफ बाटर और हमें आरसीबीसी को टीम को तरफ बाटर तो ये वाला दूसरा अनाउंसमेंट आगे मैं एक साल ले वन बार हमें ले यहाँ मतलब ही प्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं अब ये साले वाइडर हम ले कर रहे हैं को जब समय हमले ये लाई वाइडर पब्लिक अर्थात ये एंड यूजर कैंप पूरे होते हैं ना तब समय यो हमले करे को रिसर्च को सही उपाध्याय तथ्य दिन ना होना सकता यूजफुलनेस यूटिलिटी ना होना सकता किस कारण बाहर उसमें लगने को लगी ये वाला तो जी जाए सामरे आपने पब्लिकेशन सा और उपनी पब्लिकेशन और होना सकता और और को करा ना पर अब यही कॉन्फ्रेंस को यो प्रेजेंटेशन र हमले यहाँ और संग मागे को छोटो रिपोर्ट लाई रखे रा यहाँ लेते हो ईमेल पाई सकने वाला सा तेज कारण तेरे प्रोसीडिंग को लागी को सही ले आपने छोटो रिपोर्ट सही फाइव पेज को रिपोर्ट दिन छुटा होने वाला सा बने प्लीज सबमिट दैट रिपोर्ट एस सोन एस यू कैन आमी तला रिव्यू करे रा कंपाइल करने तला ये पब्लिश करने उतिरा जान सों त्यो पनी यहाँ आर को � और को कुरा अब यो कोई साथी आरु प्रेजेंटर आइले हमरो रिसर्च आरु जस्ले नापा आइले समझ ज्वाइन करने वाला है ना वने वी वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू प्लीज ज्वाइन नापा यो हमी सब इले मिलेर गरने हो अब आइडिया धरु ले आनुस थॉट आरु ले आनुस मिलेर काम गरने हो कोई और साथी आरु छान मने वहाँ फैमिली के तरफ बाढ़ यहाँ लाइक दमे रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं तेज को लागी र अंतिम में यहाँ लाइक पूना प्रेजेंटर और लाइक बधाई र एडवाइजर और दस ले वहाँ लाइक एडवाइज करने वो तेज को लागी धन्यवाद दिन दे र हम र आरसीबीसी को टीम में दस ले पचाड़ी बसेरे ऐसा स्वयं करने वो संपूर्ण लाइक धन्यवाद Uh, um, dhanyabad, Dr. Uh, Gimire, sir. Um, so I think that concludes today's uh, program, uh, this conference, mini conference. Uh, again, I like to appreciate everybody's help, uh, especially RCBC committee members. Uh, I should call out uh, Dr. Manoj Karki, Leela Khatiwada, Aditya Khanal, um, and, and Surendra Kesi, 
and Ramji sir and myself um, in, in organizing these uh, sessions. Uh, countless number of hours have been spent in, in organizing to the best possible uh, way that uh, we have done this. Uh, again, this is being for the first time. Uh, we learn from the experience and we learn from your suggestions. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we'll be coming to you, contacting uh, through various mode of communications for your contributions, for your help in any way you can. Thank you very much. And uh, that concludes the conference, mini conference. Good night, everyone. Good day. All right. Good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye. Ramji sir, are you ending the meeting?